You are now entering Maximum Driftcast, the only drifting podcast hosted by a Spanish soccer mom, a 30-year-old silver-haired fox going on 60, and finally, a 200-pound bowl of spaghetti with chimichanga arms. The champions, the champions, we are the champions. Wow! Stop it! Stop it, cowboy! <laughs> I haven't I haven't started a show with finger pistols. I was yet, like, why so you fi- why are you finger blasting the, the uh, audience? Well, there's, well, there's and there we go. Oh. Turn off the show. Good, good. Well, right. there, do you know what? We do have some of the best looking audience in 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 the world. Okay, right. I, and uh, I just figured I'd shoot a couple finger blasts at them to let mm. them know we see them, and uh, that we're live two days later, three days late, but we're live finally. Four, um, four <laughs> days. Sorry, I lost track. But this, is a, this is a first. I think it's the first time we've been live on Thursday. Wow, you Thursday, Thursday, I guess. What are you drinking? Yep. I'm drinking uh, Apothic oh, Dark. It's just like almost like blood. Oh, like a oh, that's disgusting, boy. Paco. Metal, metal wine. Uh, oh, Sam, what welcome. are you doing? What are you welcome. doing, Sam? Welcome to Maximum Driftcast, the only drift podcast where you get finger blasted by Corey within the first five seconds. Uh, <sighs> I started that way wrong. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Do you want to start over? No. Um, I would rather have you or Paco start off, but um, you know, me and Paco, I, I want to bring some some awareness here. You know, me and Paco are wearing pink shirts today. Mm, I don't think it needs explaining. Okay, never it's, mind. Then. It's pretty clear. I think. It's pretty clear. Yeah. Let's let's let the, let the guys on the chat uh, see if they can guess why I'm we sorry, wear read, pink. I'm sorry, I read your bit. Are you trying to do a bit? I was, Sam. I mean, it's actually, because this is something that needs awareness for us. All right, all right, Corey. It sounds like this is pretty important to you. Why yeah, don't you? Uh, why don't you so, hit? me and Paco are wearing pink today because it's uh, men that have breast awareness month. Yep. And That's... so, me and Paco are now a part of that. And so, mm-hmm. I know one of the guests we have coming on is also a part of that too. So, um, <laughs> all the dudes that have boobs out there, we support you. Yeah. That's why. Dudes with boobs, uh, and make sure you go to Corey's webpage, <laughs> dudeswithboobs dot <laughs> org, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, like, comment, share, yep. donate, subscribe, and um, <sighs> what what are they do no, on that's Twitch? It, that's, that's it. it. Uh, Paco, I saw I watched your video this week. What Uh-oh. are you doing with the van? Oh man, well, I mean, the van is finally being worked on. That's actual news. Yeah, well, that's good news. I finally got in there. I cut the soft frame. I removed all the power steering, the r- steering rack, and all that, and uh, pretty much making room for the S14 soft frame that I'm putting on the van. That's cool. Yeah. And where, are you, where, where are you putting the engine in that thing anyways? I know you've <laughs> talked about it. And you, caught, you cut half the van apart. It's, it's pretty much going to be like a, like a 1JC armrest. That's not a bad deal. <laughs> it's going to be pretty much like sitting next to me. You know, like, like, a little, like a little bench seat almost. Yeah, yeah you can exactly. Sit three up in the front. That's yeah, awesome. So I don't know if you saw like Ryan Turk's motor after Irwindale last year when he uh, <laughs> blew it up. But there was a large <laughs> hole in the side of the motor. Yeah, I feel like maybe having a motor, especially a Jay Z motor, next to you uh, in the cockpit is not the best. I actually, I actually, well, I mean, it's gonna have a firewall, uh, like a duck house, but I'm definitely putting like a like a thick metal. Wait, what's a duck house? A duck house? That's where you go when you are not a good boyfriend. A duck? Dog. Ugh. Dog with the dogs with the G's. Ugh. You like dogs? Like Doug Funny? Like no dogs. God, I just funny joke. If you're old enough for that, I guess. Cool. Sam, you've been Sam. drifting a lot lately. Yep, mostly every day. <laughs> wow. What? What? Have you figured out what the hell you're doing with your thing? Yeah. The car that is I'm not gonna, your thing. I'm you going to still... bring it back to Phoenix. It's going to sit in your driveway, Corey, oh! so I can drive it at Phoenix events. Do you know right. what? Actually, you Beautiful. know, Paco, you can get that on Paco's YouTube channel. Why don't oh, yeah. you bring it to Roofless Garage and have Paco work we, on it? We can have yeah, some... he's, he's got tons of room for cars. Tons of room. He has he's, 10 cars here. For, for, I mean, a lot of people don't know, but uh, Sam's car was at for, uh, Roofless Garage. Yeah, Sam's car was. Yeah, like we put it on the lift and everything. He went like half up into my attic. Yep. Yeah, we did a little bit of work on it. So hold like on, Sam. House. Let's let's get this yeah. straight. Sam, you had Forsberg and Turk wrench on your car for about three months, mm, and they was a week, but yeah. Well, three months into a week, and you haven't driven it yet. I drove it for like ten minutes oh, uh, during right. when we filmed the episode. Well, that's good. Did, was it actually going back to that episode? Did you actually enjoy them? dripping sweat and working their ass off in your car and you sat back and watched? So the question is, do I enjoy Did you enjoy that? Yeah, yeah. Sweating? Yes. Oh, that's nice. Cool. That's, that's beautiful. That's really yeah. nice, Sam. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, but I'd like, I'd very much like to drive it again and it's very much bothering me that I'm, I'm paying at this point 
many many dollars to have it not be driven and just being housed in california because i don't have room at my house so yeah if one of you guys wants to take it and maintain it i'll fly out for drift events in phoenix and uh drive it there you cool. go so paco well, uh two up performance is looking for cars like that so if you want to get sponsored you can uh message two up performance and ask for paco all right good deal yep, awesome pretty much what about you, Colby? You, uh, uh, yeah, so not, we, we know you Man, wanted to go somewhere. I, wanted to, I was waiting for that question. <laughs> I didn't think it would ask me. Well, nobody really wants to know, so let's move on. All right, so, uh, moving God, on. No, yes. no, 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 no. Let me, let, right. Hey, this is a big moment for me, boys. So, obviously, I shipped the car out to Portland Speed Industries last week. And let me tell you, I have a 2JZ sitting in my car right now. We saw that photo. There is a 2JZ sitting in the car, and you know what? It was done about a thousand times faster than I can do it. Well, so I mean, that's a huge accomplishment. Um, I'll tell you this, they're gonna, too. They're going to fabricate a bunch of pipes for it, put on the dyno, blow it up, and then switch to another motor package. Is the no, because I've done that twice already. So I think this time it's going to be done 100% yep. perfect. Uh, I'm going to be running a Link ECU as well, right? Ah. So that's another new thing. I'll be running a Link ECU. And Jason at Portland Speed is going to be tuning the Link. He's became the Link wizard. He's like the master distributor for Link. And so he's saying this. He's wait, wait, wait. Well, Link Wizards? Where's, where's well, a Link Wizard? Where's Zelda? When is Zelda? Zelda? Yeah. Zelda's Beach looking for Link stuff. <laughs> so Link and Zelda are still going along. But the thing is, is he was saying the parameters that you have within Link is very comparable to a Motec for like a quarter of the cost. Wow. So I'm so, super stoked about it because I can't afford a Motec. Link ECUs. Link, Link ECUs. ECUs. Brought to you by Corey Hosford. Link ECUs. No, but anyways, I, I'm really stoked about it. You know, I've never driven a 2JZ before. Ever oh, for one, I can, I can okay. wait till you win. This, so I'm gonna this win season. this year. <laughs> we're setting up for more victories than ever. Um, we're, we're just going down that path, but yeah. So I got it 2J in the car, I got a dog box in the car. Uh, it's going to uh, under pressure development for the manifold. I'm dude, I don't even know. I'm just super excited. I'm gonna be 2JZ life. I'm gonna go hot boy gang, uh, you know, anti V8 squad. I'm joining them too. Uh, I'll probably get it. I love the haters hat. Um, but yeah, that's 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 my life right now. So um, sweet. Sorry, Sam. I just I didn't want to throw that in your face, but no, that's good. I'm down. You you down with that? Yeah, I'm down. I mean, I don't think you're ever gonna drive it on a form of the drift track, but if you do, then uh, uh, more. Should we make a bet? Yeah, let's make a bet, Sam. I'll bet you one tummy rub. <laughs> you okay. Tummy. One little one one little tub rub for uh if one, I don't one, one tub rub that you never make it onto an F D track in the car. Okay. I'll bet you I'll bet you one tub rub for that. Deal. <laughs> God <laughs> dang it. What happened? Uh so no, weird. Sam bet me one tub rub that uh if I, 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 owe, I owe him a tub rub if tub rub, uh, tub. I don't make it on one F D track this year. So I told him I would. So if I win, I get a tub rub. If he wins, he gets Does a tub rub. Does it count if you just like hard park like a boss? I've done that. I've done that for two years straight, track. dude. <laughs> like, come on. But now you back off me. To make it onto the track in his car that he's building right now is the rule. And he has to do one run. What? Oh my god, it's gonna be easy. Can I run can I just run at full speed? Like your your feet? No, you gotta be in the car. Oh, you can oh, flint oh, stone. Oh, okay. For okay. stipulations, Uh-oh. you can flint um, I'm trying to figure out who else I can talk to that knows anything about this stuff. About stuff, having what stuff? Having engines on your car. My, the Corvette's got a one J sitting on the on, on on the engine bay right now. Uh, pa- I don't want to ask Paco for any information because he doesn't know what he's talking about half the time, anyways. No, he spends a lot of time on forums. He's good at that. Oh, he is mm-hmm. the forum. He's... I love. Oh, do you have no idea how much I love forums? He's very good at information. Oh yeah. Like I love arguing with people who, <laughs> and you know what? I love angry people too. I oh, love yeah. arguing with people. I love, I lo- angry I love people, people who reply with all caps. That's my best, like my favorite thing to do. So you're saying that you like talking to people that are calm, cool, and collected, and uh, just chill dudes? Oh yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> chill bros only. Am I right? Yeah, home? yeah, yeah. Home? That's where it's at. You know, I think that we should get mellow. Mike. Mel- yeah, here. do we have Mad Mike on the horn today, or who do we got? Yeah, let's get him. Angry Michael? Angry Mike. Wow, let's what see. a surprise. Oh, wait, hold on. Just just in, Mad Mike can't make it tonight. Mad Mike can't oh, make it? Oh, God. Oh, <sighs> uh, no. Well, let's get the next calmest guy out there. All right, let's find another calm guy. Um, yeah. All right, We're this back. is probably the calmest guy in drifting. You know, let's see. I think that we should get Mellow. You got to oh. meet the drift cast. Oh, oh. there's. Today, or who do we got? <laughs> yeah, I, I can Justin tell you something. He's let uh, he's listening to our show oh, right now. Just, just then, Mad Mike can't make it 
My mic has Oh, God. Hey, hey the no, chillest no, dude no, in drifting. Why don't you go ahead and mute your computer? Alright, let's find another calm guy. <laughs> yeah. Alright, this is probably the calm guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> your computer, <laughs> Justin, <laughs> quick. Yeah. Justin, mute your computer yeah. fast. Mute your computer fast. Hello. He's Hello. listening to the video. Oh, there. Oh, thank okay. God. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> all right, let's start you. over. Let's start over. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Let's okay, so, start over. Right. Pretend you're not here, so Justin. What? Hold on. All right, okay, so and joke, action, Sam. The joke, okay. Action. Uh, let's let's talk to someone who is calm. <laughs> yeah, who's the calmest that, guy in drifting right now? And then uh, it's you. Puck, it's, and then we're making a joke, and then it's you. But then, then you're here. You're calm, and it doesn't make as much sense anymore. Whatever, man. Uh, How are you doing? He ruined the bit. Yeah. It's like such a typical Mustang driver attitude. Wow. Oh. There, well, Wait, there. What? Are, we, are we already starting with Mustang? Yeah, we're on. Oh, yeah. Uh, Straight oh, up. Boy. Right into the chatter, bro. Yeah. So uh, we were actually just talking how to stay calm and composed, and we were just looking for advice. Do you have any advice for us? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Actually, if you would have asked me a couple of years ago, I would have had different answers for you. Uh oh. What was I, the answer? For some What's reason, the I don't, from I don't, I don't, I don't oh, know. I guess, I guess it just depends on the situation, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, um, maybe going back to Florida and crashing into somebody. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm, just, just, I'm trying to think of a scenario. Where, wow. uh, somebody that, like, somebody changing there, up their initiation there on them. <laughs> let's say that, like, you're in a situation at, like, Formula Drift Seattle, and let's say, like, someone bumps you a little bit too hard. How do you get Seattle. calm? I don't think Seattle. It wasn't Seattle. Oh, he, like, oh, oh, come on. Oh. This is only the oh, highlight reel for like six years. Okay, okay. I mean, so, was, I, mean, I mean, that's just two guys just having fun on track. Yeah. You know? Cheap, T-boning each other <laughs> into the wall. Just some fun stuff, you know? Yeah, he just won. He he won. or He, he did not win, obviously. He, uh-huh. uh, he lost like the thumb wrestling war, pretty yeah. much. It was like a thumb wrestling tournament, and I won. Dude, that would be that's a good a- way, actually, to... You know, do a thumb war to see where you start if you lead or chase first, it's and you can do that sure. on the last. I'm into thing. it. I'm into it. Oh, getting uh, getting dirty quickly. I, I've already heard from a couple FD drivers. What do you think of uh, the? Uh, sorry, I'm, st- I'm stopping all the joking immediately because I'm so curious. Because it sounds like a lot of drivers have opinions about it. What do you think about the whole qualifying and one set of tires thing? Let's get right to it. That's it's definitely an interesting topic. Um, I I respect what the judges are trying to do um i respect any rules that they make because at the end of the day we have to play in their like realm uh i definitely have expressed uh, my concerns of things um my biggest concern is when you make two runs you have obviously one lead run where you're going flat out uh nobody's in front of you and you're just running it uh to the best of your ability on a chase run you typically are making adjustments so you aren't flat out. So the amount of tire wear that you have on two lead runs is going to be different from the amount of tire wear that you're going to have from one lead run or and one follow run. So yeah. that's my biggest concern. But, you know, it's one of those things. If that's what they want, that's what they're going to get. And we're going to have to make adjustments as drivers with um, not only how we approach the track, but with how we approach setting up the car to make sure we have two solid runs, especially if something happens on the first run where you only have your second run to make things happen. How did you like finding out about it through a podcast? <laughs> uh, actually, I knew about it before because it was Damn. Uh, in, in oh. the rule book. Beat oh. us to it. Cool. That's cool. Thanks for telling us about cool. it. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, I've been I've been super curious, and I've heard some drivers. Most no one seems to be happy about it, and most of the parents say about the same thing. And and I'm curious, like, what's what's your strat going to be? Are you going to go timid on your first qualifying run, just to like use 30 percent of your tires and put down a score, and then hit it hard the second time and use every last piece or, of tread? Or, or are you just going to go timid both runs? I'd say he's always. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for sure. I definitely go timid. Usually, you're a timid uh, qualifier. Yeah. You're either gonna get in the top ten or you're gonna hit the wall. That's his, that's, that's his new nickname uh, for. I don't really, I don't really like wad in qualifying. I definitely, there's been times that I've messed up, but I'm pretty good at like regaining my composure and throwing down a good second run. Um, I don't know. I mean, I we really just got to see how I'm feeling that day because I may just throw it all out there and try to lay it down um, or maybe be a little bit more conservative on the first run and try to lay down a good, you know, 70-ish percent percent run. And uh, I don't know. 
a normal person, hundred and ten percent. I right. feel like. <laughs> yep. Well, I really, I really do appreciate the. Uh... You know what? The thing is, is like, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to put on a show for the fans, and yeah. you know, running close tandem, and you know, laying it all out on the track, leaving nothing, um, is I think the is what we should be doing as drivers for the fans. Absolutely. Um, doing con- conservative runs or, you know, not going uh, flat out or trying our hardest, then you're just not giving the fans what they're paying for. So uh, that's my approach. Yeah. Oh, approach. big balls. What do you got? Hey, uh, just real quick, Justin. I was curious, with uh, the change in strategy with qualifying, uh, was there any kind of practice or, like, a tradition you would do to kind of get your head in the game or any song you listen to in particular <laughs> when you go out there to make your first qualifying run? You know, you know how some people kind of do that. Either like Die does this water thing with the front of his car. Yep. You know, and, and some drivers don't do anything at all. I was just curious if there was yeah. anything special you do. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I think is we're trying to have like perfect mu- muscle memory from practice. We're obviously limited on practice runs. Um, I just have like a routine of how I strap in, how I put my gloves on, everything. Yeah, I just do the exact same thing every single time, even to where how I like flipped down my visor at a certain point. Um, I'm just trying to do the exact same thing. So every run is as close to the same as possible. Cause as you know, you make one wrong mistake or one small mistake and your runs over your nights over. Um, and we work too hard to, you know, not try to make everything perfect. I assume that you would listen to Return to Innocence by Enigma before I, every run. I, I thought I figured he was more of a Celine Dion um, type of guy. Yeah, I can see about that. Well, actually, I thought his routine the, was of the, of the movie Titanic before every run. That'd be really unfortunate yeah. in like top sixteen. Wow. Um, long... <laughs> I don't know. Well, I. I do appreciate the qualifying tips uh, by Justin Pollock, and we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna steal those Corey, and what, publish. What's your what's your chat? What's, what's your my thing strategy? I kind of like walk around and take notes on what everybody else is doing and compile it into one long one. So it usually takes me about thirty minutes to get in the car before I go. Did to you do that. Just do everything that everybody yeah, does. Do it's a, little a guarantee, bit of each. right? And so like from my flip, you know, I learned from Justin. <laughs> it's when I flip down the visors, what I really took from him. Yeah. So um, you end up with like a big ball of paper in your pocket, and yeah. you're just kind of like sorting through it. I like... started chewing tobacco when I was driving. <laughs> then too, that was another one I started doing. Um, but you know, that's the thing. I, I Justin, I love the advice, but I want to go throwback. I, I want to know more about. What got you into drifting? And obviously, yeah. now, I, I did some Googling on you. I don't know if there's this website called the Google, and I found some stuff on you. <laughs> and uh, I heard you used to race, what, DSMs or what? You used to do <laughs> something like that. And then there's a potato soup story. Um, can, you, can, you, can you kind of fill us in just on like what's, uh, this? Yeah, what's that, do? what's that do? What's that story do, huh? Oh, the potato soup? Well, yeah, I mean... As uh, I don't know, I, I don't know how much uh, people look into my history. I guess I think some a lot of the new drift fans just know me as a Falcon driver. And obviously that's not the case. I mean, I didn't just show up and have a ride. I started with a Mazda RX-7. Um, I actually used to live in Phoenix and I was going to school and we heard about this drift event over at the, the Irwindale Speedway. So a bunch of Ooh. friends and I drove our RX-7s all the way from Arizona to Southern California, which was a feat in itself, obviously, <laughs> yeah. at yeah, that I mean... point. Um, and we drove home. So what? Take, yeah. that, take that to the bank. How yeah. many of those cars uh, had rotary engines, though? Uh, only mine, actually. There you go. <laughs> I was, I was uh, you know, very brave. <laughs> anyway, um, I, uh, that was my first um, exposure to, to drifting, and why not? But I ended up getting a job out at AEM um, and worked there for a couple of years. And with that, I got invited to a thing called Industry Drift. And that's what kind of got me into drifting with an RX-7 in the beginning. Um, I had a couple of years uh, driving that and I was really quick to go from amateur to pro in 2008. And then in 2010, I had the opportunity to have a, a ride and drive um deal with falcon tire which really changed my life uh nice. you know they i went from eating uh really fancy ramen and mac and cheese to <sighs> not ramen and mac and caviar cheese. white wine every day <laughs> baby. Yeah. Mm. Uh, i mean I'm, I'm not there yet but you know 
Maybe, maybe like uh, sushi once a uh, year. <laughs> so hey, I got a quick question. So what was your rookie year, Justin, with the with the uh, inform the drift? I guess technically it would be two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Was that yeah. the was that the year when you, know, you battled Tanner in Irwindale? Yes, it was. That which that is one of the most memorable battles I've ever seen in Formula Drift to this day. That really? breakthrough battle that Justin just kind of like had the switch go off, and he put Tanner on a scare. It just looked like you were just going to hunt him down and eat him alive. You're making Justin blush right now. Look at him. He's blushing. I'm sorry, I'm just, you know, I, when I started I've watching seen... drifting back in the day, before I even started drifting, I, I watched that battle, and I thought that was like one of the coolest shit I've ever seen. Brian is 55 years old. Yeah, Brian's an he's old in... man. He's yeah. like 63 <laughs> years old. <laughs> He, he hasn't stepped foot in a drift car. We do call them big balls, though, just because they're old and saggy. But uh, <laughs> Can we go back even further? Than, uh, I, I still want the potato it. soup story. Oh, Yeah, let's start there. We've got to hear with this potato okay, soup so, thing. So we want to go back to uh, this is racing days. So What's this that? is in... This is in Arizona. You're this talking is about this how the when... Fast and Furious days. Oh, yeah, I'm ready for this. Shit. This is pre-Fast and Furious days. For Did sure. you ever go down to 19th Avenue in Deer Valley? Oh, like every weekend. Yeah. Oh my God. See Lady Flats. Every weekend. Yeah. Uh, so my, my man, my friend, <laughs> my friend Jason and I were part of this DSM crew that uh, tore up the streets. We raced a bunch of Hondas, and I had the slowest car, and I may have not <laughs> been the hottest head back then. So I had to race everybody first, and then if they got past me, then they would bring out like the faster cars. Oh, um, <laughs> We, we may or may not have been like sitting at the spot one time and we may or may not have been um, drinking some adult drinks and uh, oh, yeah. one of them might have been a, in a glass bottle of sorts. And, and may, maybe if I can remember, there might have been a Mustang that drove by and revved or something. And, and I, I may have uh, knocked my friend's car with this adult beverage uh, <laughs> glass bottle. And I'm pretty sure I dented it, um, trying to throw a <laughs> bottle at a Mustang or pretending to throw a bottle at a Mustang. So that was my first experience with Mustangs. <laughs> Throwing a King Cobra bottle at it. Was it was at that point that he knew, like, my future belongs yeah. in a Mustang. Yep. That what was... year approximately was this? Um, 2000, 2001, maybe. Wow. How did you get stuck with the slowest car? <laughs> <laughs> I had the least amount of money. That's, I, well, that's remember, how, remember how I was making fancy ramen and mac and cheese? Yeah. Yep. The weird part is that, is that I was in that spot in like 2002, three-ish. So there is a chance that JTP and I were at the same late night automotive I think, gathering. I, 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 there, is, there is a yeah, chance. Yeah, because I was doing that until oh, late 03 or 04. So. Justin, do you Sorry, remember no racing... Pictures. You remember we, racing we a kid in a wait 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 wait. You you remember racing a kid on a Ford Probe? I have to say yeah, white Ford Probe, <laughs> yep. blue. So it had some a blue interior <laughs> dome light. I switched that out. Um, uh, the, the grills in the front of the car were white spray paint. It's uh, it was actually Home Depot. It, it was probably so a very white. close close race because it was probably a very slow. It was probe the fastest too. probe in Arizona <laughs> against the slowest DSM here. No, piece. I mean my car was it, still. I my car ran like high elevens. It was. I mean it was. Ah, oh. so you were you were the Yo. first of many bosses. Oh, so like the whole this, slow this, thing this is you being... racing. We were like all right racing or like you know beginner racing. We were vicious, man. My pro brand tent. So, so. Sam, what did oh, you run well, in the quarter mile? Yeah, the, the eighth probe? mile. What did you run in the oh. quarter, Sam? <laughs> Sam, ten flat. What, ten flat. Oh, you were, oh well, so you were, you took your probe down to tens, huh? Yeah, well, I bought a titanium muffler from the internet, <laughs> and then I had Midas install it. And apparently, oh. you can't just weld titanium to regular old exhaust uh, stock exhaust material, so that didn't work out well. So you just used the clamp or something or some zip tie. Yeah, the clamp bad. or whatever. Cool. Um, I cut the spring so it gets more squat. Wow. <laughs> nice. That sounds fast. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty fast, you could say. High, low tens. But then, unfortunately, uh, I ran from the cops once and they created a roadblock. And then uh, and then I lost my license for six months. Oh, oh so that was probably the time. Was that the time there was a bunch of helicopters and everybody went one way? And then we we're like, oh, let's take this other way that's not towards the cops. And then we heard about like a million people getting arrested. <laughs> was that a steer, probably, was that uh, still a Deer River, Valley? Or? Out the desert. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. Yep. 
Yes. Because I, I remember there used to be a scene out near uh, Waterworld. There was that's, right, that's what they're talking uh, Brian, about. Okay. Brian, this is, we're, we're on the same night here. That was the night that I lost my license. What? <laughs> there, there was a ton of people I was that got there. arrested that night. I was there that night in the Miata. Brian was there too? Yes. Oh, wow. my God. I And we actually plowed through the desert to get away. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Wait, we uh, went uh, straight shot through the desert. Okay, so I looks totally like remember this. that. This yep. is quite a revelation that we've had here. Yep. And and <laughs> Sam, you were there fluffing everybody, weren't you? <laughs> no, I, I decided to. So here's where I went wrong: is I drove away for you know the game that you play at the illegals is like you know everyone's racing, then the cops come and everyone yells cops and whatever, and the cops just kind of sit there with their lights and everyone drives away and goes to the next the next box. There's like ten right. spots, and usually yeah. they don't follow; they just break you up. And then this time, for whatever reason, like you know, you get in your car as you drive away, cops, 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 and you run. And they decided to follow. Uh, as I ran to my car to get in to drive away, a cop <laughs> ran over with his flashlight in the window, and then I drove away. And unfortunately, the flashlight hit the door frame or window frame and then flew into my back seat. So he wasn't going to leave without his flashlight. So Good thing I it wasn't his flashlight. As I, I, I drove as fast as I could away. Um, I knew the cop's flashlight was in the car. I panicked. I threw it out the window. And oh, then my God. Shit. This is the and then, at least you gave it back. You guys yeah, are, and then you there guys was, and then there was a roadblock in front of me, so I, I, of course, stopped. And then the cop whose flashlight it was pulled up behind me, very unhappy that I had thrown his flashlight out of a window. <laughs> I just I just picture the cops going after the slowest dude, and it's going to be Sam or Justin. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't he had me. 11. He had a DSM that ran 11s. Come on, man. That was back in the day. I mean, I, I was there, too, and I remember I just Wait. ran straight into my warehouse. And I started walking, and then a cop spot me, <laughs> yeah. and then and then uh, Corey saw you in his eyes. Corey RX7. saw me. I mean, and it was it was a green eclipse. No, that yeah. was Justin. That was Justin in his green eclipse. No, oh. mine, mine was mine was white. It had a carbon hood and uh, T bronze yep. C thirty seven. Yeah, it was you for sure. And then yep. we went to your house and we <laughs> chilled. <laughs> yep. And you told me and that I could, I could have as, as many beers as long as they were Coronas. Yep. Nice. So, uh, that, yeah. That and then you banged <laughs> his sister. <laughs> 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 All right, so, well, so that was a good story. The potato soup story was awesome. And, Thanks for sharing and that. Scene. <laughs> yep, awesome. Oh well, the potato soup was another one, but Jason will have to tell you about that. Oh right. boy. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, seems... let's fast forward. Uh, <laughs> that you find out drifting is cool. You take your RX-7. You you get your your initial Falcon drive. And then uh, it's 2018. The end. <laughs> no, I don't know what, what's in between. So you, you started. You started with an RX-7, and uh, you drove that for a few years. And then, what was your first Mustang experience, and how did that begin? Uh, well, I just told you about the first Mustang experience, but the second <laughs> yeah, Mustang yeah. experience <laughs> was uh, uh, after my 2009 uh, season. I uh, got approached by uh, Falcon to drive their. Um, teal and blue Mustang. And uh, obviously that was a pretty iconic um, offer. Uh, it's a pretty iconic car, I think. And, you know, without a doubt, I took that opportunity. I was able to drive for them for four years, five years until 2014. And then 2015, I took control of my program, um, borrowed Jim Guthrie's car. Uh, he was uh, very gracious to let me use that car uh, for a prearranged agreement with that. And then in 2015, I built the car that I'm competing in today. But, well, it's a, don't you have a new Mustang now? Uh, yeah, I'm working on a new Mustang. Oh, okay. Obviously, we just uh, debuted going back yeah. to Teal and Blue, which uh, is an honor. Um, and I'm extremely excited about, you know, getting back to the Teal and Blue. Uh, it's been a couple of years, but, you know, it's, it's good to be back with that. Um, I am building a new car that I'll be... De- debuting um at some point this year probably uh second or third event i'm not going to be taken to long beach because i already learned my lesson with taking a new car <laughs> well so we, so you are going to be driving a 2018 mustang at some point soon but you're still planning on driving your tried and uh, trusty car for the first foreseeable rounds yeah for um long beach the super drift and um then we'll see if uh i have the new car all sorted out we're going to be making some changes to that like i said um well, I think I mentioned to you guys uh, earlier. The there was some some misinterpretation of the Link uh, engine management sticker on my car with a factory ECU. I have teamed up with Link this year, and they are developing a ECU solution for the Gen Two Coyote, is which is the engine that I run. 
that's the 15 to 17. There's a lot of solutions for the 11 to 14, but there's some advantages to running the 15 <laughs> to 17 with the cams and the head design and a bunch of other nerd stuff. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to be implementing the Link ECU on the new car along with some suspension changes and some uh, drivetrain changes. So once everything's ironed out, we'll be running that car. But again, I don't want to take the take a chance of yeah. coming out swinging, not having a, a comfortable car that's already sorted out to run at the first couple of events. What are the major structural changes between a your existing Mustang and the 2018? I haven't really seen, I don't think we've seen anyone drive one yet. I know that obviously you and Vaughn, the Ford Performance dudes are building them now. What's the big difference? <laughs> Uh, it's a bracket on the fender. <laughs> yeah, a, face lift, a facelift and a fender bracket. Yeah. It's it's just a like four by six inch uh, piece of stamped sheet metal is the only thing that's different on the chassis. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, so today you had uh, your car revealed officially on uh, Hoonigan's uh, daily transmission, which was uh, it was a pretty cool video, like going through the whole car, seeing yeah. how. Even after a couple years, is it one year or two years with that car already? Uh, this is actually going to be the third year. So third year. I've had two two chassis. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or I mean, two, two seasons with it. Yeah, and the car still looks great. Chassis. Looks very looks like you know like it's just fresh again. Right. Looks brand new. Still um, makes my ears fucking bleed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I want, buddy. To talk, I want to talk about that in a second, but Paco, finish. One it. interesting thing I noticed is the, your uh, electric power steering, which this mm -hmm. is not an electric hydraulic pump. This is actually fully electric. Yeah. How do you like that? Like, I mean, I've, I've just heard a lot of people saying that electric uh, power steering... Dudes used to steering's... remove them from their cars, and they used to consider that something that would inhibit them. Huh? Right. So, um, you know, in years past, actually going back to like Arc 7 days, I mean, those racks just aren't really designed for the loads that um, we put them through with maximum steering angles. You know, um, there's a lot of load on racks or if you get hit, a lot of load on tie rods and whatnot. So even with the S197 racks that we used to run on the old Falcon cars, we would have rack problems either with bending the rack or bending tie rods. They just weren't that strong. So when I got my 2015 car, I noticed that mm -hmm. one, the actual rack itself was crazy buff and the uh, inner tie rods were a couple millimeters larger than the old um, ones that we used to run so i was like man i want to see if i can make this work on top of that um i don't have to run a power steering pump i don't have you know i can get more wrap on the crank pulley i can get more wrap on the supercharger belt less less accessories to drive off of the accessory belts um, which obviously robs horsepower um and it was kind of something that just wasn't proven. I was looking or kind of reaching out to potentially find solutions. I linked up with Cortex Racing up uh, in Sonoma. They had a little standalone uh, controller box that basically controlled the uh, steering rack PCM. And then I also worked with uh, Ford Performance because I did some research where they were doing this boss rack in their race cars which had less power assist. So I approached them and saw to see if they could possibly do more power assist, which <laughs> they put together for me. Um, so basically the rack in my car, you saw it was like red. It said off-road use only. They put a special um, tune in it that has maximum power assist, which makes the steering extremely light and uh, works really good for, for me. I've actually used just the off the shelf rack as well, which works. But again, we're always trying to like push um, the envelope with things and try to get any type of competitive advantage. So it's a really simple setup. It's two bolts that hold the rack in place. Mm -hmm. The tie rods are ex extremely safe or um, ex extremely buff, and um, you know they, they hold up to a beating. I've obviously put them through a beating, but yeah, yeah three years strong on that thing, and it's still working great. So do you Imagine. think that uh, do you think that Ford did does Ford get involved with like uh, getting input from you guys from back in uh, the days when Mustangs first started becoming serious competitors with Falcon? Uh, did they get information from you guys and what broke the most or what uh, was uh, what gave out the quickest? And then from that, did they develop uh, stronger parts uh, for the Mustangs in future generations? Um, you know what? I think that the Mustangs that we used to run 
uh, back in the early Falcon days, at least for myself, they were so far from being something relatable to Ford Performance that I think it was just more of a, a marketing partnership. Um, however, the last couple of years that I've been running Crate Motor Coyote engines, I've been working with the Ford Performance guys, Ford Performance guys, a ton with you know, just giving them feedback on their crate engines, uh, working with the Roush guys on their off-the-shelf superchargers, and putting this stuff through stress tests that they would normally not see. I mean, taking right. a engine that was designed for 430 horsepower and putting out nearly 1,000 horsepower um, year after year, I think is uh, tried and true in what those guys engineer, and they love that feedback. You know, we right. did a teardown of one of the engines from last year, or the engine that I ran last year, and the wear was, like, not there. Um, That's what I understood from that Hoonigan video, is that a lot of the stuff in that car was, like, at least three years of solid use and not being replaced. And you're only just doing preventive maintenance. You're not, you're just out of the caution, not because it's actually completely worn out. You had to change it. And it's also, but, well, like, available on most, most uh, auto parts store. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, there's probably a Ford dealer that has a part that I can use. Um, worst case, I mean, I, I come from pretty prepared um, to the right. track with spares and whatnot, but, you know, it, it makes it easier. So how important is it to have a nice rack? <laughs> Good job, Clark. <laughs> uh, no. Going back a few spaces Which there, we're talking you about? Had, in, in regards to your uh, livery... What does it necessarily mean to run the Falcon Teal and Blue? Because you've you've obviously been on Falcon for many years, but what does it actually mean to run the Teal and Blue livery versus your own private livery? I mean, dude, it's like a, it's an honor, straight up. Uh, when I got into drifting, the first time that I went to a big event that Falcon was at, seeing their haulers, and back then they had a ton of cars. I mean, there were some pretty iconic drivers that have driven for Falcon, and um, you know, it's, it's one of those things you see that team and it's just like, I want to, I, I want to aspire to be a part of the teal and blue team. And I think any driver that has driven under the teal and blue flag and, and been able to rock their scallops, definitely, uh, it's a major accomplishment in, in my career, I think. And, and being able to, you know, them ask, you know, us working out a deal to, uh, put that back on my car is, is awesome, you know, coming full circle, I think, especially since it's now a car that I built, I engineered, and I'm, you know, obviously continuing to drive. Yeah. And you don't have to answer, of course, any specifics, but is it a level of financial support that you've decided to do that again? Or is it your choice to just want to go back to that livery again? Cause you were um, running your own previously. You know, uh, initially the conversation started, uh, at Atlanta grid life. I, uh, I was out there driving with the, the other Falcon boys in, in all the demo cars, and I brought an old uh, teal and blue suit with my old teal and blue helmet, and I was talking to the Falcon guys like, hey, you know, dude, this feels good. Like, I want to do this again. Yeah. Like, what do you guys think? And, you know, they were, they were down with it. I think they liked um, – I kind of proved to them that I could handle my own program. All I right. think there was a little question – when I, you know, when Falcon kind of took a step back in 2014 and 2015, I kind of had to scramble for the most part right. to put my program together. Dude, that was tough. I mean, Dude, I can imagine. going from arrive and drive, everything taken care of, the car in tip top shape, like every round to, OK, uh, I got to make sure I have all these spares. How am I going to get the car to all the events? I got to get flights for people. I have to build this car. Dude, I mean, it was straight back to grassroots, but obviously with a ton more experience along the way. Right. But, dude, it's a lot of work, man. I mean, there's yeah. not a lot of drivers that engineer their own car, fabricate their own car, build their own car, um, do maintenance on their car, not away from the track, drive their own car, drive their own rig. There's a few of us that do, and I respect the hell out of every single one of those dudes because I know the struggle is real. Uh, hey, and yeah. I definitely appreciate what I had with Falcon with that arrive and drive uh, deal. But it's definitely made me appreciate what I've been able to build since then and the, the relationships that I've been able to cre create with the amazing sponsors that 
allow me to do what I do uh, on a daily basis. As much as I do, I do like seeing the teal and blue on your car again. It all, in an all carbon just looks so good. <laughs> I wish I wish more I drivers need... could rock soul just raw carbon. You know, I would love to put the kit that's on my car onto a street car because, dude, that shit would yeah. be nasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I'm happy you... you're keeping the carbon hood, though, because that's, that's always been one of my... Even though I guess you could say it's a dated style. I don't know. That's something cool about that. I think it's classic, dude. Yeah. Like, that's why I did, like, the white wheels for the reveal. Um, I, I hate to break hearts if anybody's, like, in love with the white wheels, but trying to keep white wheels clean on a competition weekend is about as impossible, so that'll be switched up, but, you know, the classic falcon livery to me is the teal and blue on the side you got to have white wheels and i just like the old school like s15 style where it's like the carbon hood carbon trunk black yeah, up the center way. if i could do a, a carbon roof i would do that yeah. so uh, anderson hooked me up literally every car that i've ever designed in a video game has carbon hood black roof hood, and yeah. trunk well it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, funny like, yeah, get, it, it's funny because justin's like very being very stylistic but the thing is is Going back to the RX-7 days, he was the one of the OG hot boy RX-7 dudes. Big chrome wheels, slam. Like when, when I joined drifting community, like I, I was like, oh, there's this Mustang jerk like in his team <laughs> colors and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, actually, he was a total JDM fuckboy. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I still love JDM style. Uh, obviously, it doesn't really fit in with my daily life. But, dude, when I see a car that's like has good fitment, Nice body kit that fits correctly and everything's dialed in. I mean, dude, how can you not love that? I mean, yeah. that's what our sport is 100% about. And so is that kind of like, where have, where have you got your inspiration from? Like the whole RX-7 thing and the design and this, like, where did that come from? Was that obviously from like the JDM Haraguchi, Haraguchi. style? Or... There's there's only one. Yep. Right. There, there, there's only one. I mean, Haraguchi. Haraguchi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's only one ask i mean hurt is obviously the new hot boy <laughs> right but um you know he learned it from his daddy hey! there you go. <laughs> and, and and his daddy learned it from my daddy from daddy yep, the you know? oh, yeah. so you got to give it up to that dude he still has awesome style but if you bring that to formula d you're going to get walked and getting right. walked when you're uh putting that much effort and money and time and blood, sweat, and tears into it is not fun. So, dude, I'm going to raise my car up and make it work and try to get on that podium. All right, so let's ask you this. And what would you prefer to drive? Would you prefer to drive more of a stylish, fun, loose setup, or would you prefer to drive this rocket ship of a monster Mustang? Let's get Formula Drift Street, uh, you know, street legal there you going go. on. Let's do this. I'm ready. Let's put the pressure um, on. But, uh, you know, I – it's – each one has its own flavor. I mean, driving on a loose car, you know, cars that are like fitted with like stretch tires and everything, they're all loose. Like they right. are, they don't as, as fast as you think it might be driving a thousand horsepower Mustang with, you know, 295 like sticky Falcons is fast, uh, yeah. especially when you're throwing it sideways. I've never driven a stance out car that is that fast. Um, they both are extremely fun to drive. I think I'm just, used to driving a fast mustang so <laughs> i guess it's just easier to do whatever i want to do in that car so i guess it's kind of more fun um and i'm sure anybody that has a stance out car and is into that which again that's my roots yep. if you put them in a car that makes a thousand horsepower and has 75 degrees of steering angle Dude, they're not going to say, oh, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, mean, I hope not. I mean, no, because it is nuts. A fast Mustang is already a cool thing. Uh, what? I mean, Sam, do you agree? <laughs> I mean, a fast I mean, Mustang going sideways is a cool thing, yeah. in my opinion. But I, I mean, mean I was, I was, cool. uh, this was a, like a new segment shitting on Fords. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, which, Same. Is, which is kind of funny, though, considering that, uh, that almost everyone runs a Chevy motor. But yeah. But I actually, uh, question, Justin. Have you, have you had a chance to drive uh, the, or any, any experience with the Voodoo engine? And any, what, like, what are your thoughts about it? Yeah, Voodoo engine is uh, it's definitely a really good engine. Uh, you know, the 
Ford Performance guys wouldn't have designed it if it wasn't. Um, <laughs> That'd be cool if they did, though. Well, I mean, well, reason, it might work. They, they had a couple yeah. misses, you know. The four, what is it, a four seven? Four, what was the 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 Iron Dookie? Four six. <laughs> yeah, the four, four six, six was kind of lousy. But that was well, that was that, I think that was their entry into the modular engine program. Yeah. They've learned a lot since then. Um, the Voodoo has its limitations on thing uh, on certain things. It um, it has some vibration issues. I think it's kind of limited because of the compression ratio. Uh, but as a naturally aspirated animal, oh, yeah. dude, that thing throws down for yeah. sure. And it rips up pretty high, right? Yeah, it, it, it revs up high. It, I think they, they can make over 500 wheel on those engines. Mm. And you're talking about something that's still 300 some cubic inches. Um, you put that up against an LS that, dude, apples to apples, it, there's no competition. Yeah, it's a what, a 5.2 liter, right, the Voodoo? Mm-hmm. Yep, and so, a flat plane, flat flat plane crank too. Most important question we can accomplish on this show: Why for your car make my ears hurt so much? Because <laughs> I've spent three or four years—I forget how many—on the FD sidelines, and doesn't matter if I have earplugs in, ear protection. Does, your car is—it hurts. It doesn't feel good when you go by. <sighs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, I mean, I mean, you just need what? better. Uh, you should wear those fancy uh, earphones that you're wearing. I know. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Good plan. Or, or, so or grow, is so or grow is a that, pair. Is that, is that the design of your exhaust? Why is it the most, like, and it's not even just physical volume. It, like, hurts. Uh, you it's feel it in your chest. piercing, like, super that's, high. Uh, I will totally explain it. It's small displacement, high output. Because all the other cars are probably 400-some cubic inches, for the most part, in V8s. Yeah. But a 302 cubic inch, small displacement, it just has like an intense feeling when it's making that much power. It's a five liter. It's like the trumpet of FD. Really? Yeah, the coyote, oh, yeah. the coyote brought the, the five the five liter back, but that's like that's a kind of like a cool thing. I mean, like um, Brian, uh, who now owns a Lexus, you know, the LS four hundred. That's a that's a four liter V eight, so it's even smaller. But if you hear those things screaming when they're open up. This, this it sounds glorious. Yeah. So a small, a small I mean, displacement V8 sound, sound amazing. But there's something else, though. though. I mean, Turk's Ferrari car is obviously a very small displacement V8, but it's, it's something just extra about yours. I don't know what design or what feature isn't it is. A, that, isn't that Ferrari, a, is that a flat plane crank? I believe so. Well, Sam doesn't even know. It's, it's kind of round. But... I, I literally don't know, but uh, I feel like I've heard the car nerds talking about it. So probably <laughs> yeah, um, it's a flat plane, so it's gonna have a different uh, sound. Yeah. Same yeah. with the Voodoo. The Voodoo doesn't have that intense, like cross plane sound. That's just, I don't know. Ask the engineers. But anyways, uh, can you stop? <laughs> How do you shut that thing? Put a put a good old. Dude, uh... I, I will make sure I blow out your mics. Uh, <laughs> I know it, it is Mer- that is that is Mer- true too. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Because <laughs> I'll have I'll have like my mic level at a certain volume that's perfect for every car. <laughs> And then JTP comes by and is just peaked out and destroyed. His car is okay. so loud. I'll, I'll try to idle when I'm going by you. <laughs> Thank you. If you okay. can just cut the throttle real let, quick. Let, let me give the audience a real quick tech minute with Paco. So, oh, God. Here we go. A flat plane yeah. crank, sometimes just called a flat plane, is a type of crankshaft for use with internal combustion engines that has a 180-degree angle between crank throws. Flat plane cranks are used in V-configuration engines, generally with eight cylinders. All right, this I, has been another episode uh, of Wikipedia with Paco. Yep. <laughs> I, literally, I still let me Google that for you with Paco. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean like, what it is. What it is 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 pretty much like the order of of the of the cylinders, pretty much ascending. You know, like yeah. if, if you look at the crank, the top, the top, um, uh, and the. I mean, compared. Like, let me look at the camera. Okay, so. You have the center of the crank. Yeah, you keep. You have, hold on, Paco. Keep moving that hand. Hold on. Put your hands back there. No, open, your mouth. Forward, front open hand your mouth. Open your mouth. Back in, forward, backwards. Like, or yeah. You want to move. All right, hold on. You want to move the closer arm. Kind right. of rotate that so it's cupping. So let's, let's do this again real quick. So you have the center cupping of the crank. Yep, and go then ahead. you have the top and the bottom. Like it's pretty much yeah. flat. Like they're not like spread all over the crank like in other engines. So that makes the pistons go up and down in a very. <laughs> Um, it looks like I'm dancing. Like, yeah, you're doing some banner right, dancing. Yeah. Anyway, right, Paco. So let's say, let's say that you're skiing. Let me see your hands real quick. Like, okay. you know, use your hands like they're on yeah. ski poles, and like you're going down some hills. Yeah. So now do so one, now like, just alternate one at a time. 
That I'm, two I'm guys. Try, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to catch some <laughs> snow. Yeah. Oh God. Justin, Hawk. Justin can't even look anymore. No, he's not. <laughs> he, he's blushing right, again. He hung up. <laughs> yeah, Justin's <laughs> blushing. Yeah. For those on the, uh, as usual, the, my segment, the uh, audio-only listener ex- explanation. Uh, it looks like Paco's putting invisible penises into his mouth. <laughs> no, it looks like I'm skiing. Oh, oh whoa, okay. I can see how wow. we got confused there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, back to Mustangs. Right. Yep. So, anyways, I would like to bring up a, a point. I, it's like I would say in the past year or two, it seems like you have changed in a bit. You know, we see you doing more fun events like Grid Lives and things like that. And before that, you. No, I'm, I'm just going to be honest here. You always seem to be the hothead dude. And it may you be know, perception. Kind of like, it may be perception. I know. Just in the head, it's like, oh, you better watch out for Justin. He's gonna run uh, you over if you walk in front of him. He, he did or, put a driving clean and got grid life, man. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. But it goes back to this mo that you used to have of being the grumpy, angry dude in the pits that's ready to fight everybody. And there was only one point where he almost wanted to fight Daigo, which oh, I think. I heard that. Hold yeah. on, I think that yeah. point. Hold on. That was a really good thing that happened for the sport, actually. Yes, it was because I think it was one of those turning points where it's like. So much shit happens in the pits that don't that people don't see, and now that they finally got the first taste of like, dude, this shit is turning into NASCAR just with people interacting with each other in the pits. That really kind of changed the sports, and now it's like you cut to uh, you know videos nowadays, and it's Kristaps driving off the drag stand. Now it's people trying to beat the five minute clock, and now this stress and pressure that people are just like, oh, you show up with the car and you go drifting, and it's all fine and dandy. I think that was the first year when they actually started filming live in in the pit area too, right? Yep, and for for the live stream. And of course, it was Justin ready to fight this nice, gentle Asian man. <laughs> yeah. and, I was and... actually just trying to find out if he spoke English, <laughs> and I was, I was so frustrated. That, I, that he couldn't talk with me. I was having to talk to Robbie, and Robbie was trying to translate, and I was just trying to, like, ask him how his day was. And he <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, of course. I remember, I remember hearing something from someone like, yeah, you speak English, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was, okay, so I don't know who said it, but I remember someone saying that to him. <laughs> and there was times, hold on, there's times where you'd see Justin fly to the pits and just, like, rev at people, like, shooing them out of the way, like, get out of the way. Oh, it's happened, it's happened to me multiple times. Oh, it happens to me. Like, the whole revving thing, you have people you have that are like, rev, rev. And then you like get all pumped up and rev at him, but then other people are like, "Oh, he's just a jerk trying to rev until you get out of the way." Yes, it's like, that exhausts, you're, trying to appease, you're trying to appease some people, and then other people are like, "Oh, he's just a jerk." And it's like, dude, you're you're damned if you do, you damned if you don't. I think you just get, like, make everybody ice, happy. You well, know, so, like an ice cream truck. If you can get one of those going, yeah. oh, like, a little like or like the or, little bell. Yeah, like just a the, little the bell. Bring, bring. Yeah, there you go. I'm sure Paco has a weird Mexican noise for that. Paco, what are the bikes? What noise do bikes make in Mexico? That's a Mexican bike. Okay, yeah, it's a two-stroke Mexican, two-stroke Mexican bike. Two-stroke Mexican bike. <laughs> but that's the thing is, uh, so you you go from this seem to be this angry warrior, right? And that's well, where you, well, that's know, I think hold I was on, just getting really serious at that point, you know? And, I, right, but that's where you got the nickname uh, JT Penis. Oh but <laughs> what? What? That yeah, that was an era of JT penis, and now you have blossomed. <laughs> he doesn't seem pleased. Who well, called well, him it's, that? I'm just telling you. You let him know right say. now. But wow. let me finish. I see the same face from when he this, looked at Daigo right now. This is he's blossomed into this gentle sweetheart, and now he's this very approachable person. When before there was this big misconception about Justin, and now you see him out there actually seem like he's having more fun rather than being the grumpy angry guy. Which there was that for a period. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think that's when uh, drifting was turning into a job. You know, that yeah. happens when you are driving for a big team. They're expecting a certain performance uh, out of every event. And at that point in my career, if we look at, if we look at it where I was coming from right. and why I was so serious, up until that point, I was undefeated that season. I won Long Beach. I won Atlanta. I won the first two rounds of that round, that event. Um, put in perspective, too, my wife was eight and a half months pregnant, so I was expecting a son at any point. I thought I was possibly going to get a call that weekend. Um, so I was on edge with that. A big change in my life. And, and I'm not trying to justify No, no, anything. no. I'm just trying to, like, shed light Absolutely. on where I was coming from. Because this story never gets told. And I'm not really one to put a lot of stuff out there. Right. Um, but this is how, this was my life at that point. You know, I was soon to be a new dad. I was undefeated at that point. 
and homeboy's entry speed was 10 miles per hour slower with a brake lights coming on in front of me than his qualifying runs. So what, I what I many drivers running. have referred to as Daigo games, but Daigo game for sure. For yeah. sure. So I thought I got a little bit of the short, short end of the stick on that. And I was going to let him know like, Hey dude, that's not cool with me. Right. I didn't, I didn't ever swear at him because right. he wouldn't have understood it anyway. <laughs> yes, he would have. You know he does. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like we've we've had loose conversation on things um, since then, and I think he I think he respects me. I respect him. Um, I definitely was aware of what he his potential was after that point, point. Um, and you know he's caught other people off with, you know his Daigo games. Right. Obviously, that wouldn't be a thing if that wasn't true, but I think. Uh, because of that situation, I think the judges looked at potential games being played because we didn't really see it too much before that point. Um, but also, there was a bunch of hype around Daigo with all these, uh, you know, fanboys of him, which rightly so. I mean, it was exciting right. to have a D1 champion come and compete in our series. And I was just the one to approach him, I guess, in the wrong light. Was If I would have done, to, to look back at it... Um, would I change things? Obviously, I maybe maybe would have approached him at a different time. The timing wasn't good on that, but I had a lot of stuff going on, man. Um, you know, I'm not trying to justify no, I, again, I, I, you know my actions, but I learned from that, and and I definitely would not do that exa- same thing again. But that's life. You got to live yeah. with your. That's actually. I mean, that's that that's do. pretty nice. That's you know, a, because it's a, it's, actually, that's a really good story. That yeah, you just told it's that. like a lot of like a lot of the like the one of the things that we found out with this show is that a lot of uh, uh, people from an audience they found better connections with drivers when drivers actually say like, "Hey, you know, this is what happened. We're little people," and then we're like, "Hey, drivers are just people too." Well, you know? it, and now I like him. You know. Well, that's the thing is, you know, at this point too, Justin, this was what twenty twelve. This happened or two thousand? What year was it? Twenty twelve or thirteen? Twelve. Yeah, twelve. Right. Yeah. Would you say at that point that's when drifting started getting the most serious for you professionally? For sure. So eleven now you, and twelve, it was like serious business. And in, at stakes. that time too, tw- I think, and this is my just my two cents. I think drifting at that era was probably the most difficult time to be in drifting because all the judging, the rules were weird. It was sp- judged by Stuff speed. Stuff was changing every round. You like, touch a cone, it's very... a zero. You drop a tire, it's it's a big deduction. Two tires is zero. Like it was so technical. And I think at that point too is even during drivers' meetings. That point, it's now sponsors want to have a better, clear layout and clear understanding. So they're really changing everything at that point. And at a driver coming off of three wins, going in, worrying about these crazy rules and regulations. Like I said, having a kid. I think that was a very difficult time, which obviously nobody knew that. Everybody just thought, well, hey, you know, drifting is supposed to be fun. Keep drifting fun, da 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 But it's actually, it's a life for you. This is how you make money, and this is how you support your family. Absolutely. It's, it's, turned, it's a career. I, you know, and I'm one of the very, uh, I'm one of the few very fortunate people that can call this a 100% career. Like, I don't do another job. I haven't worked on a customer's car in some time. And again, like, you know, I live, I breathe this stuff. I support my family with this stuff. Um, you know, it's important to continue doing this. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely am thankful that I've had these opportunities. And, you know, it, have I made mistakes along the way? Absolutely. I mean, who hasn't? But well, I think the main thing is just like learning from those and, and trying to do your best to just at the end of the day, like put on a good show for the fans. So, so here's a couple other interesting things. Um, you know, you're you're another dude that entered a professional motorsport that didn't come from professional motorsports. So, you know, there's some cases where it's like there's etiquette. You know, there's these kids that are bred from going from go kart racing, how to communicate, how to drive, and now you have this this dude that is you know purebred on the street <laughs> racing to now you're in the biggest team in the world in drifting. And you're learning along the way, I'm assuming. And uh, I'm sure that alone was probably another thing is like you have the street racer turned driving the biggest for the biggest team, biggest car in drifting in the world. You know, I didn't even think about that, but you have a pretty valid point. I definitely started on the streets racing and drifting on the streets, um, you know, going through that whole thing and then really trying to dial back myself from being that type of person to representing big corporations 
and doing the right thing all the time. You know, right. there's no class that you can take. There's no instruction manual on what to do or how to act. It's kind of a learn as you go. I mean, that's how I've gotten anywhere in my life. Um, I, you know, I didn't learn how to be a drifter from going to a class or a right. school. I learned on the street and I learned going up through Just Drift and the Pro-Am stuff and semi-pro stuff. And, you know, back then you weren't really put in a situation where you had to act extremely professional. Right. Obviously, just on a personal note, you try to be as professional as possible. I mean, to the point that I used to have big plugs in my ears, but nobody <laughs> probably knew that. But yeah. I didn't think that was a good look when I was representing Falcon. So I took those out, you know. It's just one of those things. It's a, you learn from the school of hard knocks. And, and again, you make mistakes. But, you know, there's no class to tell you how to act as a driver or how not to act. Like, I, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth and, and you know, come up through kart racing or any other pro professional motorsports. So it was all new to me. I, right. was, I was learning I was, as I was going and, and trying to, you know, do the best with, with what I had. So what do you what think? What size? Hold on. Very important question. What size were your plugs? <laughs> They were pretty big, dude. Um, <laughs> I think they were into the uh, fractions. I know that. Oh, dude, that's I, I don't crazy. know how big that is. Was that big? Size? How did you? I guys actually see it now. You got the little like puckered up butthole in your ear, like I do. <laughs> for life, for life. There you go. <laughs> I only so, had it two. I had, I didn't even go into the fractions. I so you guys are plug one. buds. Oh, we, yeah. we should uh, we should plug each other sometime, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So here's the other question. Going back to that, now saying you're you know you're a prime example, dude coming from the streets, now racing for the biggest drift team. What do you think were some of the most difficult things you had to kind of work through to maintain that or to grow as a driver? Um, the mental aspect is definitely the toughest. Uh, you know, I was given basically all of the tools I needed to succeed but dialing back as a driver and really controlling yourself to not overdrive the car. I think it's, you know, it's a thing that I still can, um, you know, struggle with, but, you know, I've had some really good runs uh, years and, um, you know, I think I, in 11 and 12, I definitely was, I think I was like killing it. You know, I was very dominant in the sport, but as things changed with my team, there were some trials and tribulations that I had to go through. Obviously, a huge change in 2015, taking over my own program and with a ton of more responsibility on my back. Are you drinking? Of course I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're not drinking, oh, Justin? What like, the hell? Are you doing this sober right now? I'm, I'm about to go get a beer right oh, now. Oh, please go. Free, do, do, you, do, you need a, do you need a break? Do you want to? Yeah, you can go get one. We won't talk shit about you while you're gone. That's fine. <laughs> Guaranteed. Um, yeah, here. I'll just take you with me. Oh, oh there you go. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Hey, do you know what? What, what, we're, ta what we're talking talk here? Shit. I want to bring someone. While we're talking here, you said yeah. one thing, and once again, at this point, we've already kind of. I've only said one thing all. One life. thing. Yep. No, no, but this is one thing that has stuck with me because you are definitely the more more vocal of the drivers when things happen. I don't remember what year this was, but it definitely stuck with me, and it was something where you were getting like the brunt in of all the bad calls. I don't remember what year. What was that? Was that when you picked up? Uh, I think that was like. Uh... Probably 2011 through 17, maybe. <laughs> so the past six, but I'm just kidding. I remember Entire you said career. something. I think it was either to the judges or to like the staff as a whole. It's like, you guys got to stop doing this shit to me. I don't know why I'm getting all these bad calls. Like This is my livelihood. You guys are affecting my livelihood at this point. What is going on? We need to figure it out. But you said something along those lines and always resonated with me because you definitely stepped up and was like, we need some more explanation of this because I'm not happy. And by you guys making these calls... It's really affecting what we're doing long term here. Um, I do remember something like that. That might have been, um, maybe that was Seattle when uh, they called like two tires off, or and then they we found we actually Lauren in HD. Oh, oh, I yeah, remember yeah. that. I remember that. Yep. Yeah, there might have been that one or. There, I don't. There, there was a couple that like after the fact we had proof of otherwise. And, uh, you know, I was just straight up because I think that it was we were kind of just going down a, a path where I was like, they, they just were expecting maybe too much of me or they had preconceived of ideas of what I should be doing. And if I didn't do it perfectly, then it was like the call was going against me. And I was just like, what's up? Like, do you guys have a problem or what? Whatever. But, you know, this is my livelihood. I mean, I've made a 
life out of this. And getting the short end of the stick, it's really hard to basically say to sponsors like, hey, you know, when they're asking, dude, I thought you won that. And I'm like, yeah, me too. And then they're like, why are we even doing this? Right. So, you know, it's like as much as you want it to just be an entertaining sport, you have to understand that results do matter. I mean, there's money in this and people are spending money. The more that you're you, the further that you get into top 16, the more exposure these companies get. So it's important um, right. as much as dude, I, I wish it was just all fun, but it's not. It's there's money in the game. There's emotions. There's you know livelihood. It's called professional you know, it's, drifting for a reason. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. But you can but you can just kind of like get to where Turk is, where you're not very good at driving, but you still <laughs> get money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. That's a joke. Hey, uh, cheers. Oh, Justin is opening yeah, his beer. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to find a bottle. Oh, my God. Use your teeth. Yeah. Use oh, your butt. Yeah, use your butt. I've seen, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen Pat, I've seen Pat, I've seen Pat oh, doing, doing it. Hold on. He's going to get a plastic. I want to see oh, it. Oh, he's using uh, a water bottle there. You can okay. actually pretty much. You're one of the dudes that can use it for. I hope you can see oh, water great. flight Sorry, everywhere. <laughs> falls in the laptop. And yeah. Hold on. Pop it on the corner of the table. Yes. Uh -oh, no, yeah, yeah, on the desk. I'll just go get a wrench. Hold on. Uh -oh. All okay, right, here we go. BRB, where he's going to take us to get a wrench so he can open his O'Doul's. Looks like he's drinking an alcohol-free beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Raj, Raj beer. Yeah. Was that like a like uh, 110 octane? It's, uh, what, is no, it, what do you think, 114, Lance? 114. 114. What's it going to be? 40 weight? 50 40 weight? weight? 40 weight, 50 weight? So should right. I use like a 10 mil wrench? If you have one, Actually, usually yeah. those get lost. I think I think uh, Stellas are 12. 12? Yeah, Stellas 12. are 12. All right, let's see what happens. Is that a, a snap-on? You got Did it. it. Work? Uh, uh, is, is that a snap-on wrench? Good yes, man. God. <laughs> Sa plug. Sam just got a hard on. Yep, Sam just got a got a snap-on hard on. No, he's actually getting money every time he mentions the brand on on the oh show. He God, just like, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Link ECU. Link ECU. Oh, there you go. Literally. This is not Portland. Twitch, guys. Yeah, Portland Speed. Link. Portland Speed. All right, make sure of Twitch Prime to sub. Cool. Um, can we cheer, right, can we cheer now? Oh, do you know, hold on, I got a question. Well, I'm, well let's, hold on. I'm gonna, I want to turn it back a little bit. You... Let, let's just cheer now. He opened oh, his beer already. Beer. Cheers, okay, salute. Cheers, salute to salute. Justin, Sam. Justin and Mustangs. Sam, what is, where's Sam at? Where's Sam hiding? Yeah, he's just like uh, he's, oh, there he's, oh, there he goes. Sam's butt chugging, chugging it. Chug, chug, chug. Sam's butt chugging it. Why are you doing a headstand, Sam? <laughs> uh, he's, question. He's so hold on, hard. hold on. Let's talk about this because we, we didn't right. bring this back up. Let's go back to S and the Camaro. Oof, that was like the the, the battle of the century. Pollock and Essa, the dream the black, team, black cars, black beauties. Uh, what was up with that? Did you help with that car? Because he what was he with the what was Roush trying to do something with Camaro or? What was the relation with uh, with that? So, um, you know, Mike uh, met with. I, I did try to like help facilitate that that deal. Uh, you know, Mike's a good dude. He works really hard. Uh, you know, he's. I, I think he's cut like me, where he builds his own car, he runs his own car. Um, he's one of the few that does all of that. And um, well, I guess there's a lot of guys that that do that, but um, he's just something. You know, he does all of his own fab work. He engineers his own stuff, designs his own suspension. Um, I, I got a, a lot of respect for him. Um, but, you know, he I was trying to, like, help him get a break. They were interested in him. They wanted to for him to uh, run that platform, which, dude, we all know Chevys are not that good. So, Shit on Chevy's back. Shit on Chevy. Hey, hey, we're back. Back. Welcome to the team. <laughs> we had a segment called Shit on Chevy, and it was one of the first three episodes, and it's back again. With JTP, firm, shit on Chevy. Do you got anything? Can we shit on Chevy shit for about a minute? Go ahead, hit us with some Chevy shit. I ain't got nothing. Oh, <laughs> <come on. laughs> he he probably loves it. Yeah, he loves LS his engines secret, down, low down, key, down, yeah. down low. So okay, no, tell us. I, I, it was just one of those tough things. You know, he had to basically engineer a new car. Uh, he got that car. Maybe thirty days before Long Beach. Oh yeah, we and remember that was like <laughs> that, a, was that was like a shotgun <laughs> wedding, dude. That was tough, but he put it together and he made it. Uh, he worked on that car all year. I mean, we were transporting together, so I saw all the amount of work that they did to that car. They took like a Wise Fab kid off of a BMW and chopped it up and I don't know, legal, uh, like put it together and, and put it on there. And 
it Sounds worked. Perfectly he legal. started getting it sorted out at the end of the year, but it was just a little bit too late. And um, then he actually still retained a partnership with Roush through um, one of their other companies. Uh, who was, was his title sponsor? Loudmouth Exhaust? Yeah, Loudmouth. Yeah. So that was another one of Roush's companies that they switched him to, and he uh, worked with them that year. So nice. um, I don't know. That's his deal, though. Ask him. <laughs> Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about it when yeah, he was we, on the show. We had him on the but... show. He gave us the, the whole thing with, with the Camaro. It's kind of a sad story. Um, and, and, and I mean, and, and in reality... And we started playing Arms it... of the Angel when he started talking about it. <laughs> and, and <laughs> it, it... Just, just under-prepared, yeah. under, under-prepared cars. In, in reality, which... we don't hate Chevys. I mean, maybe Corey hates him now since he's yeah, last Chevy. I'm, I'm going TJ, up. baby. I'm going more hot boy yeah. than I've ever been in my life. That's right. You know, I, to be honest, I don't hate Chevy I, yeah. at all. I mean, I think that... I'm I'm stoked for Matt Field and what he's building. I think it's good to see some, you know, actual GM cars in the series. Right. I think getting more manufacturers involved would be great. Uh, obviously, BMW doesn't care. Um, <laughs> but if, uh, you know, there's Nissan is in it, Toyota's in it, yep. Ford is obviously in it, Dodge seems like they're somewhat in it. Um, if we could get Chevy into it more, I think it would be good for the sport and right. create more opportunities for more drivers. So more the merrier, you know, yep. you got to have those rivalries, uh, especially from the big three in Detroit. So, you know, I can't hate on the Chevy. I used to drive a Chevy truck for a long time. It was a good truck. Yep. But uh, my Fords are like way better now. So. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's like a Roush, hey. Roush power Before truck. It. Um, Before we but, get too far away from the beefs, though, well, well, uh, hold on. We we we're, we're still on beefs. Are you going back? To, are you going beefs? We're going beefs. Are you going to go beef puck or what are you doing? Going beef? Yeah. Beef. Sam, hit him with the beef. Beefs. Yeah. Beefs by Drake. Beefs. Uh, beefs. You 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 and Vaughn are cool now, right? After yeah. after our incidents last year. What what happened? What incidents? Sam Phillips. Sam. Well, Is Sam, from what the... I recall, you guys like oh, to hate oh, each other a lot. Oh, oh, and then, and then, someone's door got some damage to it. Someone Everybody was fine. going for fighting. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, I want to know. I want to know about you your tell. new fiber doors and how you strong t- they are. Do they, can you they, tell, can they, Sam? Can they handle any sort of abuse, or what can they do? They are. Uh, they are tested and proven. Yeah. To <laughs> take uh, take serious abuse more than you would ever. Want to put them through? How many foot pounds um, torque is that? Like literally that foot, <laughs> pounds. <Yeah. laughs> foot pounds. Brian, foot pounds. Yeah, uh, yeah. One solid foot pound. One human foot uh, pound. Of torque. It's like a junior si- junior <laughs> side foot. The funny thing is, I actually was. We were contemplating making a sticker. Uh, <laughs> put foot here. <laughs> like a footprint. <laughs> Dude, uh, so where, yeah. where I would totally rock that sticker. That. <laughs> so from your, I know, I, I mean, you guys were hanging a good life and cool there from all appearances. But where, where do you think this struggle began in the uh, in the Mustang Driver Chronicles? Oh, uh, next question. And they all <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, uh, I plead the fifth. No, actually, I no, I mean, uh, but, I think it was just it was difficult split when I stood or stayed with um, Falcon. Uh, you know, that was a little bit difficult um, with, I think, what his plans were and what we had been doing with um, the... Uh, my phone's about to die, so I got to go so, grab oh, like, some it. special charger. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that was that was a little bit difficult. But, um, you know, we worked through it and uh, whatnot. And there's... I think it's been just a rivalry. And, you know, I think... There's a mutual respect to some extent, and there's we're both we're both competitors, dude. At yeah. the end of the day, I mean, we're showing up to to win, and you know, people make yep. mistakes. Dude, having that well, rivalry actually, is awesome. I love watching you guys go against each other. Yeah, it's no, a it, fun it, battle, what especially makes it... because when I'm making videos for Ford Performance, it is uh, the best content I could ask for. <laughs> and and I'm, one of you guys look at that battle uh, that we had back in Atlanta. A yep. couple years prior to the incident, right? <laughs> um, the other incident where, you know, we battled like a, multiple times, and dude, it was gnarly. Like, it is we some of the best battles, and I think what makes those battles so special too is that rivalry and whatever it is that you guys have against each other. 
is so awesome. So it's and a, it's once a, again, it goes back to creating this this the storyline that once again it first came around when the whole Daigo thing happened, and it's like that storyline is makes what makes it so interesting to watch. Because once again, if you just have two cars out there driving, yeah, it's going to look great. But that story is what makes it so oh, special. And that's what and we, we, you know, and that's Sam. That's one thing that we talked about FD about is like. Dude, if these people actually knew what was going on behind the scenes and what each one of these runs meant, it would create a better story, not just for watching the cars drive, but what that moment yeah. actually meant. You don't need to do like reality TV, like fake fight bullshit. Like there's enough drama going on in the pits anyways, which is which is fun and, and hopefully people continue to tap into that. But yeah, I mean I mean the the Vaughn and a new thing of last year was was definitely entertaining to watch from the sidelines and and fun up until the boiling point but i'm happy to see that it's cool now but i think part of what it was is i imagine you guys couldn't stop making contact because uh that intensity does get turned up even if it's in practice well i think the the cars are just uh the cars are just so much different um on that on on, yeah yeah. what's what is what i mean if you're watching like I, I i have the luxury and curse of going through hours and hours of gopro footage of in-car stuff and when you see the threshold of error and correction that is required to maneuver it when you're doing close contact tandem and at the speeds and the throttle and brake and steering modulation you're doing like it's in it's amazing you guys do anything at all out there with the cars you have and it's even more amazing that you do it within close close proximity to another car of similar build and it's even amazing when you guys somehow avoid each other and when you don't avoid each other it's completely explainable when you see the in-car and the limited amount of time you guys have to think. I think Matt Field or someone else said it, like, you have to literally be thinking two or three seconds ahead of where you are, and, and you can't... you can't. Absolutely. Count. I mean, and, and if you if you look at uh, the event leading up to that, um, where there was contact made, you know, coming off the bank and going through that cloud of smoke, you can't see anything. And obviously the speeds that we were going through that section were completely different. Um, and it's one of those things, if you leave anything on the table, you're going to get walked. And at that point, I couldn't leave anything on the table. There was no intent at all of ever hitting anybody because guess who's fixing it at the end of the yeah, day? You're still buying your own body panels as a, uh, as a team owner, of course. Dude, so. I'm, I'm, I'm taking off the bolts, replacing panels, putting the bolts back on. It's more work for me. So do you think I want to create more work for myself? Absolutely not. On top of that, I don't like my car not looking good. I don't mm-hmm. like working on my car more than what I need to. So it makes no sense to think that there's any type of malicious intent at all um, at, at, at any circumstance. And you look at how close we're running tandem. Dude, uh, I mean, I got plowed by Kristaps in Orlando <laughs> one year in practice. And it's just, dude, like you get pumped yeah. up and you want to drive close. And, you know, we all, like I said, we all make mistakes. Um, and then you look in Atlanta and I like barely tapped uh, him and he continued the entire run. And I did beat it a tire because, um, you know, that's unfortunately what happened. But there again, there wasn't like any huge contact. I think it was just maybe boiling point and some frustration that led to what happened. It does feel a little bit good yeah. to hit him, though, right? Has to. No. It has to. No, not at all. No, dude. Okay. I don't like breaking my car unnecessarily. I mean, I don't. I don't like hitting anybody. Um, because at the end of the day, I gotta fix it, and I like my car looking nice. Uh, okay. Which I showed. It, it was. Um, I remember. Uh, and I'm. Mean, I'm not trying to poke fun at you, but like that time you. Oh, uh, here it goes. Get no. ready. Uh, Brace yourself, JGP. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you you hit your car pretty hard at Long Beach, and it came which back. Time? It was uh, <laughs> yeah, which time? Yeah, actually, I mean that was like two years in a row. Uh, but it was this. Um, I think it was two years ago uh, where the the whole front of the car pretty much got destroyed. But you just came back with the car looking like Mad Max, and it was epic. Oh, and he qualified that way too. That yeah. was. That was uh, 2013, actually. Whoa. So can you show, tell me just how to qualify in <laughs> general? Wow. With the yeah, broken what you, car what or not? What's your tips for, for qualifying? What are my tips for qualifying? Yep. And for Corey specifically. I'm taking notes for a any. friend. Um, well, I mean, my biggest tip would be just getting your car on track so that you okay. can make a run. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Good. 
That's Han. that's, that's Paco, did, you, did you that's log a, that? Paco? That's already Paco, tough. Did you log that? I, <laughs> that already scratched like oh, the whole awesome. program for awesome. 2018, Corey. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Justin, actually, um, so something I wanted to touch uh, touch base with you. So, you're back in the teal and blue. Matt feels in teal and blue. So now we have an, a new Chevrolet four rivalry right there. Are you guys gonna oh, be? Shit. Are you guys gonna I didn't be? Even think about that, Paco. Yeah, I mean, like, I was like, are you guys gonna be like uh, teamed all together? It's, so it's gonna be actually instead of frenemies, it's gonna be uh, trifecta. Uh, yeah, trifecta it's gonna, docking. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's like a there spaghetti western all there over you go. again. There Wait, which one? Which one? Who's Justin, the good? Who's, who's bad? Good, who's the bad, ugly? Yeah. 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 Odie's gonna be good, of course, all because the, he's I mean, Mr. Sweetheart and like. Hey guys, don't mind me. I'll take my time. I think it's it's, it's obviously very clear as, as <laughs> out based on what we've discussed all day. Um, yep. You call him Matt Field ugly? <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, Justin, okay. come right, on, Paco, write that down. Let's take notes on that. We're gonna we're gonna pass right, that on to Matt. Gonna this, so that's Justin gonna be the name of the episode Matt. now. Matt Field is ugly. <laughs> Justin. Well, he's not bad. <laughs> the ballad of he's Justin. Not bad, right? Or is he bad because he drives a Corvette? No. Ballad of Justin Paul. That's pretty. I good. guess we'll see. I mean. I, I really am excited to see him drive that thing, and I, I he's an intense driver, and I, I'd say there's about a 50% chance he's going to put in the ball on <laughs> Easy. Don't wish that upon anybody, for especially how much work that he's put into that I know. Ball. Don't wish that upon anybody. I know. I, no, wait, of course I, I don't wish it. I would never, ever wish that upon any form of the drift driver. You no, I didn't did. wish it. I didn't you wish it. it. Oh. It's the main. It's the same oh. thing as wishing it. You I've just it. seen pieces of his car fly off at Long Beach every year. Dude, and there's uh, so much composite on that car. Oof. It is like I mean I haven't seen it in person, but it looks really good in pictures. And I I know that struggle of putting together something that with all of your heart and trying to make it like perfect because that's what I did with my car, yep. and then I put it into the wall two years ago. So I. Really hope that doesn't happen. And it's not like I think there's a 50% chance that Matt Field's going to put into Long Beach. I mean, I give you at least 60 or 70 just because you're you. <laughs> and that, I mean, most of the other drivers are like at a 25 to 50. So Seth's not helping this. Well, even before that, <laughs> D-Mac put it, uh, the Solstice in the wall oh. and the yard sold that thing. Oh, oh I remember He started that. it. Yeah, he and started he it. He definitely started it. So it is a teal and blue uh, curse. No no, oh, no, no, Long no, Beach? no, 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 last year, with the year before last year, when he was on the local news, and it was <laughs> yeah, boring, like, <laughs> that was 2016, I saw that happen, yeah, Check out that was impressive, formula drift, and then, of course, it had been raining for two days straight, and all the oil in the parking lot, what have you, but, I mean, uh, that's part I mean, of what, that's just excuses, right, I mean, we're supposed to be the best drivers yeah. in the world, well, yeah, Long Beach retired Darren word. McNamara, it required, it retired June Meng after a gentle <laughs> June, June. Yeah. June yard sell, what was that, the, the Chinese, the Chinese driver who crashed Forest yeah, car. Forrest rented his car out to that's total. His first, that's it. They're gone. Uh, yeah. So Long Beach is obviously crazy. Uh, one thing, though, I want to ask pretty much every driver now, especially us Americans, is how the hell do you beat James Dean? What's your 2018 plan? How do you beat that fucking guy? I'm just I'm just glad he's on my team. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that's all I got to say. The Falcons. So, so I mean, he but is, you didn't answer my James question. So, he is oh. probably the best driver in the world right now. I mean, yeah. hats off to that cat. He... He is an amazingly consistent driver, and that is the name of the game to winning. Um, and to be honest, Peter really stepped it up at the end of the year as well. Oh, and showed his true cover, colors, and both of those dudes are, are going to be forces to rec, um, reckon with this year. But you got to give it up to those guys. I mean, good style, uh, crazy close tandem. I don't think that dude actually like scratched his car the entire year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I don't it's know. The, it's it's, it's gonna last, be tough. But yeah, I'm still trying well, to talk. I'm still trying to figure out what Wart House is. Wart yeah, House. That's, uh, uh, that's like a. It's, it's like a cream. A, that's like a cream. Yeah, for uh, roofing company or something, right? Uh, I thought it was some sort of cream. <laughs> so we already made that joke in Driver on Driver. Oh, God damn it, ah. Sam. Uh, but uh, what? So, but let's talk dirty. Like, what's your what's your plan when you get behind James Dean uh, for battle? Because he obviously qualified first, and then you have to fight him. Well, how do you dial your car? How do you go against him? What's your plan? Because we obviously know he's one of the best, if not the best, follower in FD right now. His lead runs are often first place qualifying. What do you do to like, compete do you against have, him? Do you have some kind of like secret button to like drop, drop a bunch of call drops on the ground, like little spiky little things or something? <laughs> That's Good cheating, use of the word call drops. The, the thing is with James, you know that he's not going to play any tricks, so you can run yeah. him straight up. You know, the, you, He's not going to leave anything on <clears> the track, and it's those type of people it you can be confident in following and, and know that 
you can try to get as close as possible to them because they aren't going to waver. They're going to run the same run every single time. Um, again, like I would much rather drive against somebody like that because I of know that there's on hundred percent runs every time than trying to drive with somebody that you don't know what they're going to do. And right. unfortunately there's several drivers that are kind of starting to do that a lot. And like who you tell me their names right now. We'll accuse them on the show live. I forget. I forget. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, but James, so do you dial your car for the fastest? Is he the fastest guy out there? Do you dive in uh, more earlier, tighter? Do you like what's your strat against that guy, or what's your future plan? Because like, you obviously got to look at it in a way to win. Like, how do you? Because you're you got to know you're going up against a uphill battle, and you're going against him. What's your what's your strategy? To be honest, I don't approach anybody like that. I mean, I'm not you worried do about anybody. Driver. Yeah, okay. But you don't do adjustments per driver physically on the car or psychologically for you? You just kind of do the same thing that... Oh, that, absolutely. Uh, I mean, but that's all... I mean, I can't, like, bench race James Dean right now. Um, yeah. It all depends on how he's running. Yeah. Yeah, it all determines on, like, how he's running. You know, he didn't qualify first every single round. I mean... Take that, James. Him, you, you fucking loser. <laughs> I, it's one of those things, you know, I got to give respect where respect is due. Oh, absolutely. And he is the most dominant driver right now. Yeah. But being a competitor, dude, I'm not worried about going up against anybody. I mean, if you are, you already lost. Yeah, I'm so not worried. That's but... obviously not the way to approach anything in this sport. Um, on any given day, I think I can beat anybody. Uh, I've proven it in the, in the past, so why not have that same mindset going into every battle now? I feel like yeah. if you gave only 105% against James Dean, you could beat him. Because I think that your follows, your follows are, in in my opinion, many times more more aggressive and better than James Dean's follows. Because I think you usually are less shallow than him, but then you seem to do as you say you do, and you you go like that one percent too hard, which Vaughn does as well, and Chelsea does, and everyone seems to do against James this season is that like this are at their limit chasing him or leading against him and and just what, what about that. jonathan castro in orlando castro had the right mixture of uh everything uh that was required to beat james well, he, see, did. It, he, well, he drove he, he drove like james but one percent better and that was enough well the other thing and too that's is all, like, that's all you got to do you don't yeah. have to beat him by a mile you just got to beat yeah. him by one percent well, well that's the and other thing obviously jonathan did that yeah. And that was the other go. thing too that i was going to say is like you know i can't imagine going against these guys it's like i have to do 105 percent Hopefully it works, and I know there's a big percentage that it may not, but if it does, I'm going to win. And I think if a driver thing, could... Go ahead, Justin. The, the thing is, if you try to drive at 105%, you're going to mess up. Yep. You have to be in that 90th percentile all the time without going over 101%, because when you drive beyond your ability or beyond the car's potential, that's when you're going to make mistakes. And But that is also the hardest thing to kind of reel in in the sport because the field is decorated with so many good drivers nowadays and so many cars that are rocket ships. It's and not Matt, like five years ago. That field? Uh huh. The driver job? Oh, <laughs> come on, Sam. <laughs> no, Where, but I mean, I, I you've think, been oh, driving for I, a decade. Oh, sorry, Paco. Yeah. Well, more. Where, no, you've been driving for a decade. Where, where do you improve? That you, I mean, obviously, you know what you're doing by and large, but mentally. how do you get better? Mentally. It's a mental game constantly. Yeah. Do you do yoga or something like that? No. Namaste. Car wheels. <laughs> I would... Um, the, uh, what, shit, I forgot. What's it called? You lose it? Oh, CrossFit. Sorry, CrossFit. 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 What? No. No? Uh, what about uh, jump, uh, leap frog? Jumping jacks. <laughs> Jumping leap frog. What, uh, Burpees. What Thumb about? wrestling champion. Thumb what wrestling. That's all you need. Thumb wrestling, though. Kegel exercises. Kegels. Yeah, actually, yeah. I, I would like other than other than driving. Like, it, what what is it? Like, I mean, you know, like some other drivers, like some other guys skate. Uh, I just like, sip. I just sit margaritas on the beach all day. Oh, there you go, my man. That's doing. Where the do you live? Uh, in Covina, not near a beach at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, margaritas in Covina. He's yeah. just got the wallpaper of a beach in that one room. You know, that's so. He's, yeah. still, he's on the beach all the time. So, with with all this chaining for you, what are there you? There gonna... it is. <laughs> What's oh, there it is. Yep. Oh, he's Going got the wave. The yeah, the yeah. big wave. So JDM. Well, yeah, he, because so, he's so JDM. Yeah, he's like the Haraguchi uh, reincarnated on this yeah, American respect, guy. Respect. Yeah. 
Nice. So what's your plans for this year? You got two, two. You have one car, another car in the works. Are you doing anything outside of Formula Drift? Yeah, um, you know, grid we're doing Grid Life, Ayo. which is obviously an awesome uh, event, lifestyle event. Can we can uh, we go on a ride along with you? Rock crawling? No, on a, well, ride along and yes, rock crawling oh. both. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude, for sure. Uh, come and Sick. do some three sixties. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because like you had like probably the sweetest move you and and uh ryan literal had the sweetest Dude, ryan ryan of... literal is a ripper yep that kid throws down yep i mean it's like but you guys are both in california right yeah yeah both top trip yeah boys. They, they both hang out and they, they, they can you guys do like a double 360 this time sure Baka, can you, you talk about what you're referencing for those that don't know all your inside deep tracks no well i mean like uh you know, uh, JTP pulled uh, like a 360 drift at Grid Life. Uh, I think the 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 boys from Donut captured it with a. Uh, I thought you were talking AMGs. about the truck race. With the what? Uh, the truck race. I thought he was uh, driving trucks and did a 360. No, it was at Grid Life, and it was on video. I saw what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it was like. Uh, a lot of them... I thought you were talking about. Uh, weren't you driving like a trophy style truck at some point? No, Who? I'm losing my mind. Just cool. never mind. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> We're talking Bring about it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. So, anyways. All right, cool. Okay, double. Okay, so this is what's gonna be double three sixty drift. Justin Paul. Double seven twenty. So tandem, no tandem. No, yeah, tandem, tandem three sixty drift entry uh, at Red Life. Uh, Justin Pollock and. Ryan Literal. That would be the sickest yeah. video Ryan of the year. Where are you at? Are you uh, agreeing to this? Because I'm down. Oh, he's definitely listening. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll make sure he listens. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, right. it is on. What's uh? Let's start focusing on uh, getting to the Instagrammers. Do we have any other major groundbreaking questions or revelations? I got one question, just real quick, Justin. Um, your Are, thoughts. You're gonna have to answer. You're gonna have to ask that on Instagram. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. so back to Sam. Back oh. to the line, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Really? Oh, what's up? Really? What's up? Uh, what is your thoughts? on uh, Von Gittin's suspension setup? Because you guys run the same chassis, right? But you guys run completely different setups on your cars, yet you both seem to be equally effective. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's completely different than my theory. I mean, I wouldn't say equally effective. Different approach. Different approach, yeah. Oh, I, wait, did you get paid to say that? No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not on the team anymore, man. I got. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, so he has a media turn? guys open to hire. So if you know anybody that's looking for a media guy, uh, you can message Sam at he's, Drift Idiot. He's not contractually obligated to hate on you, man. <laughs> Sam got no, the axe, actually, dude. Sam got I'm the axe. I'm just, not on the Vaughn team for 2018 Formula Drift, but I am uh, shooting his practice session next week. So any tips you can give Vaughn for the 2018 Mustang, I'll, I'll tell him. <laughs> no, just uh, you know, look at that, that fender bracket. Fender bracket. <laughs> check it out. Check, I'll check that off the list. <laughs> um. You know, it's just we have different approaches. I think they are doing, you know, something very much like dirt track cars, and I am not doing it as much as they are. It's just, you know, driver preference. Everybody has a different setup. If you look at um, Chelsea and Vaughn's car, they aren't identical. They definitely do very similar things, uh, but that's obviously their theory on what they want. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, tease their own. Like it's just not my style. I like my car looking like a drift car. <laughs> Ooh, and not a dirt track car. I feel like more right, drivers that's, are that's going what to I, that's dirt what I track. Here, I'm good. truck. I don't know. You look at James Dean. His car didn't look like a drift car all year. Yeah. Yep. True. No, but I think, I mean, I think I, the forties also have just such different old suspension that uh, I, I don't know. Has anyone? I've, I mean, technically, I like if you Odie's... look at it, it's a McPherson style. The only thing difference between a Mustang and a two forty is front or rear steer. I feel like the uh, I feel like Odie's car almost looks more like dirt tracky than the other two forties. Though, when you think about it, I don't know. Maybe it's just because yeah. Recently, but... well, well, I mean, he uses a lot of weight transfer, and you know, he has the same theory. But he was doing that before. Uh, you know the other Mustangs were doing. He's one of yeah. With, he's one of the original dudes doing the. But, uh, squad. but he also runs a lot more droop uh, on his suspension, so his tires stay on the ground. Um, if you here, fun fun fact, go to their car in the pits, crank the car all the way to the lock, and see if it lifts a wheel without moving, driving. 
it'll I'm pretty sure it lifts a wheel just from the amount of jacking that they have in the car. So it's not anything magical. It's just how they have the car set up with not a not a lot of droop in the car so that it lifts a tire. Um, but, you know, it's just their setup. You heard it here first, kids. Go around to the form of the drift pits and start turning up sure. on the <laughs> again. And check it out. Um, yeah. Speaking of checking it out, it looks like you're in your shop right now. Do you Would you mind giving a quick tour of uh, what you got going on there at the Hotline headquarters? Sure. Oh, boy. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's go. see. Yeah, so what is, tell us, first of all, what is Hotline? Is that a Hotline, shop to the public? Uh, is that just not, your shop? Not for hire. Well, for uh, hire. Drake wrote a song about it, actually. Yeah, yeah so what, Hotline Bling, yep. for sure. Sam, do you know that, that song? Only mean one thing. All right, here we yeah. go, here we go, here we go. Okay, it looks like the there's a... All right, so wait for Corey, can you help our audio-only listeners here? What do we have there? So Justin is ripping a sick selfie right now. Um, it looks <laughs> like... Uh... Justin, put the gun down! Oh, God, he's pointing at the camera. Justin, no! All right, no, he's it's just a he's, No, giving us a tour. It looks like we see a, a, a Bear 2018 chassis with... And there's that plate you were talking about. That that okay, one yeah, has. you can tell because you of the bracket. The bracket. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the bracket. You can see sure. the bracket. There's a forklift. Justin does own a forklift. And now we're looking at the sweet Mustang that you're going to be competing in in Long Beach. Uh, I'm not good at the selfie game. Here, no, dude, you're so killing it. Yeah, you're, you're totally blocking. You can, you can totally be an Instagram totally blocking model. Totally blocking the view. You can be an Instagram <laughs> model. Uh, no, this, from my understanding, you, that was uh, what year is that Mustang? 2016, 2017? 15. 15. It's actually a 50th anniversary edition. With but the, what's the front end on it? 18. It's so, got all so, the 18 front end stuff. Okay, so I, it's a sang- it's a cookie. But you only have to. It did is, you only change a, the front end? I did the Koki front end conversion. It's a Mustang Ooh. Koki front end conversion. Sweet. Yeah. Paco knows so his got, Mustangs. You can you can tell us oh, uh, properly go. here, JGP. I've heard love hate things about the new front ends of the Mustang. Do you like it? You know what? Um, my initial knee jerk reaction was I did not love it. Like I, straight yeah, up, I'm like, with you. I'll be I'll be honest. But, dude, come on. I that. did not like it in, in pictures when I first it's, saw it revealed, but uh, now that I've seen it in person a few times, I really like it. Yeah, it I agree. It, it, the, 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 the photos like the weren't good. Pockets, yep. you, like you, you put the Roush pockets on, the Roush front lip, the Roush gr- grill kits, and this color scheme. And I don't know, dude. I think it's – I'm obviously super biased, but it's mm. pretty magical. I, I do think. like the carbon hood. I do like the right, black. For, Audio only listeners at JTP just jumped under the hood and closed himself in it. <laughs> Help me out. I'm stuck, guys. <laughs> um, so do you plan to do you plan to run wheels this season or just none on the front? No, we're right? actually working on like hovercraft uh, setup. So I mean actually you know, the other guys were, were only having one tire on the ground. I don't yeah, you're gonna need do tires. No, yeah. no tires. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna dirt track the hell out of this car. So you don't even need front wheels. Max steering angle straight rotor. Bang! Right there. Measure that. Straight road, straight, what, uh, straight what, what kind of uh, steering kit do you use? Is that custom made? Is that some sort of uh, magic? Um, it's just uh, you know, unicorn tears and some no um, bunch of billet. That's, yeah. that's a that's a JTP angle kit right there. Ooh. Hey, Shop. hey, I've heard of him. All right. Feel, well, obviously, feel Kevin to... Walls is going to be scrutinizing the hell out of this video, <laughs> making sure everything's legal. Kevin, you know what to do. Hey, uh, oh, no, somebody I, asked. I, I make sure um, my car has no gray area. I definitely don't ever want to get caught up trying to cheat Oof. because uh, that's not my MO on things. So I run everything that I do past Kevin to make sure that it is within um, not even like in a gray area because that's dude, not it's, fun. It's not even worth it. Some, shouldn't you be doing the stuff? It. Shouldn't you be doing the stuff that should be illegal next year? Yep. Why? That's because that means you're on the cutting innovator. Doing That's what F1 stuff. people do. Uh, somebody <laughs> asked in YouTube chat, why aren't you running the Jeff Jones angle kit? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't even what, know. What, what angle kit is that? <laughs> the no unicorn, Probably. unicorn angle? Yep. Uh, another question, actually. If this is the one we got very commonly. is Why didn't you do any burnouts at Hoonigan? Dude, I know. I uh, It just it didn't work out. I They were actually shooting another... Uh, episode and by the time that we were done they were doing all the shots that we needed for ours they had to get going on the other episode i mean i was i was pretty down to but then again it always gives us another opportunity to go down there and do it again tear that place up i mean just saying i mean because you could uh maybe they had some 
some they were, they were shooting something outside. It looks like they installed another lift outside the shop. Uh, well, the biggest problem is that you know JTV is unwrappable. So oh, that's they, right. There just was not enough daylight yeah. to to try and wrap me. And they tried like five or six times the previous time I was there. I brought the comp car, and they just were like, <laughs> "Yeah, you know, we're not going to be able to wrap you in time." So. <laughs> it just didn't happen. The, the, the unwrappable JTP. Dan, Dan is uh, he's on the chat right now. He's being commenting back and dude, forth. Dude, Dan is the man. He is that dude is solid. Danger I, Dan. Yeah, you should you should bring him on uh, uh, for Pro Two. I, I heard he's lo he's looking for a for a chair to drive Pro Two. Bring him on for how? What? He's 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 a license. No, he's no, a, no, the term is looking for a chair. A, a really. seat. Sorry, he, looking that, for a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, he's looking for a seat for. Pro his legs are very tired. He needs he to take a seat. Like down. Yeah, one, what, let him let him use your uh, one of your Mustangs for Pro Two. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. There yeah, you go. There. I mean, like the Paco just wheeling, dealing. Nice work, Paco. Dan. You're welcome. There you go. Done. <laughs> Done deal. Right, so what do you guys just say? Hey. You come and finish it, and I'll drive it. Oh, oh there you go, Paco. If you finish no, from no Dan, dude, Dan's a fabricator. He knows like no he... Dan gets down. Yeah, Dan gets down. yeah, throw down. Uh, Dan, JTV, Dan before down. you before you leave the entire garage area, what is one cool piece of memorabilia we may have never seen before, or something that has an interesting story? I'm sure that like every other car guy's garage, you've got some weird shit hanging around. You have uh, anything interesting or memorable, or that means something that. I don't have anything that means anything. <laughs> it's all just garbage and car parts. Yep. I mean, it's Mustang parts. I mean, I don't know. Do you have any pieces of like uh, your first RX-7 or your first Mustang? Why would I keep? Why would I keep any of that crap? All right. Okay. Well, obviously you have no feelings. Cool. We've. Oh, what? What? Are, hold on. We're looking at something here. Oh, we're going to the crap room. No, this is up in Jayland. There you go. Jayland. Oh. oh. Look at what? that. What are we that's, looking that's, at a Maxis? That's uh, not super doof. Don't, don't like plug other brands. FC what? rear bumper, if I had to guess. Is that your first FD bumper? This is my battle bumper against Tanner that we were talking about. Nice. Hey, there you go. This is the uh, the old green FC bumper. All right, so for our audio only listeners, you uh, put up some car bumpers. They've got a bunch of dicks drawn on the Sharpie. <laughs> uh, only in your dreams, homeboy. This is my yep. old. Uh, this is my first um, green Arc Seven hood with like this super special, super rear rare. Can you see that? Yep. What what is Mazda speed? speed. Legit, like one of the, like maybe two or three in the United States. Damn. Not for no. sale. It's chilling. Not for sale. No, I, it's just chilling here. I, I, I hope you, look at JDF. this. Uh, he, he, for you guys that are just listening, he's showing us a collection of all. Old... Oh, he went upstairs. I'm, yeah, dude, I'm upstairs. I'm like, up are, you gonna, are, you gonna, are you going to are you going to are you going to do an elbow drop on the hood? <laughs> <laughs> all right, catch me. Can you catch me? Put your hands do up. Do it. <laughs> are you ready? I don't know where. <laughs> Damn, like... you won't put your hands out. You don't even care. I like how he hides all of his JDM past in like a dark recess of his <laughs> well, garage. So just no, covered well, with a blanket. Well, what happened? So the story with that is that I actually moved from a big shop to a small shop to try to save some money. So I put all my uh, most memorable stuff up there for now until I hang it up. Yeah. Nice. Oh, like there you go. That's pretty. That's all that carbon fiber stuff from the other Mustang. Yeah. It nice. looks like it's off the RX-7, Paco. Oh, that uh, totally. Yep. Make sure, don't, <laughs> yeah, <for> sure. <laughs> don't, don't touch yourself after touching all that dirty old fiberglass with your bare hands. No, it's fine. What no, do you I guys can... say uh, we hit some IG questions? Oh, dude. I, I just want to say that it's amazing that he's able to keep like entire sides of his car intact after hitting Vaughn so many times. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, do you want me to pull out that door? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's what I oh. Can you can you see that? I There's can see the hook. Mark. There's a little mark from <laughs> a, right, a boot right, print. Right, can you, right, yeah, right on the There's a boot the print right there. Is, is it like a foot long mark? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. All right, here I'll start this off. Okay, let's here right, we go. We're gonna go off. to Instagram Sorry. questions. Instagram questions. Sorry. Filmed by Taylor. Who do you want to battle most this year? James Dean. Nice. Oh, yeah. Super strong. Super strong right yeah. out the gate. I have a question from uh, Dirty Dinger sixty nine. That's sick. XX. Wow, nice handle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. I don't know. We, we have the best. Yeah. Um, he's asking, "Have you met Jack Roush 
And have you fly with him? Have you been? In- uh, fun fact: Justin's dad is Jack Roush. <gasps> kind of, kind of. He is a cat in a hat, dude. But he he's not is the cat in the hat. Your dad fooled me in Texas this year, and I was like, I was with Danny George. I'm like, what the? F-? He's like, was Jack in Jack it? Roush himself? And he's like, oh no, that's just Justin's dad. And then he calls him over, and your dad's all hanging out with us. I'm like, that is a Jack Roush replica. Which, which by the way, uh, uh, username. Uh, Pat Gooden says that Justin's uh, dad is the best drift dad on on Paddock. Probably, I would agree with that. Probably, my dad is friends with everyone. Yep, he, he tries to keep the peace. That's there you go. Uh, I, go ahead. Hold on, let me get in there. First question, actually, this uh, dude was waiting. Uh, who is DP? He says, "Will you please build another FC? Do you have any <laughs> more FCs in your uh, future?" Hold on, you you're gonna have to start over. Oh, uh, what? Did you lose a yeah, headphone? The uh, technical uh, difficulties. First question uh, that this guy was just on the point. He he was the first person to respond to our Instagram. Who is DP? Says, will you please build another FC? Do you have more RX7s in the in the pipe? Um, I mean, it'll probably happen one day. I can yeah. see ha- it happening. Do you have a party car right now of your own? Yeah, it's right there. That, there it is. That beaut. <laughs> it's the office. A party car, as in one uh, you can willfully destroy. Not intentionally. Oh, is, the, is that a missile car? Uh, no, well, we don't call it missile cars anymore because that implies that oh, it's shitty and it's missing body panels. Now they're party cars, which are like oh. stylish. And oh, so. so what cool. happened to the missile car fate? Like, uh, was... Missile cars became less cool when, when the Paco missile... started giving away free body kits to everyone. Yeah, I, I had to stop the missile crisis. Thank you, sir. Thank yep. you. Uh, um, so, what was the original question? <laughs> uh, well, you built another FC was where it started. Oh, uh, I have some choice items that I've made, like retained. So we just I have, saw that up there. Jeez. Well, that I probably wouldn't use that because that wouldn't be that wouldn't look very good. But um, I have a set of my wide fenders. I have a pretty rare front lip and diffuser, and I have that hood. And I have some DG5 coilovers and a OS Geiken clutch hey. and a Cusco diff. So I basically have the like Hot basic Boy drift, Express. drift package. And I may or may not have a super prime set of TE37s that I've been saving. Ooh. So Damn, my favorite wheel. It, it, it's probably in the future at some point. But is it going to be rotary? I don't know. Ford I want to see. Like, well, everyone always LSs their rotary. I think it'd be cool to see an illuminator in I want, one of those. Uh, I would actually probably. I've been kind of contemplating the two three EcoBoost because oh, that'd be cool. Right out of the box, it's three hundred fifty horse, three hundred foot fifty foot pounds of torque. You can put a Roush Yates Pedal Max kit on it, which bumps up. I actually just saw it today, which I was blown away. Uh, a pedal Pedal Max and a Boost Max. It's 95 horsepower to the tire wow. through an automatic. So wow. you're looking at like 400 um, wheel uh, on a 2.3 EcoBoost with warranty. So that's probably what I'd be putting in in that R7 V mount. You know, definitely like J style, like cooling yeah. setup and whatnot. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, Those... we can, we'll see. Those motors bump me out so much with my Subaru life and my 300 horsepower EJ motor that will blow up if I put it at 400 horsepower. And like just the Dude, fact that the, these, these factory EcoBoost motors are making more horsepower than my motor will ever safely make. The, that new Ford stuff is amazing. I mean, their GT program with a 3.5 liter twin turbo yeah. um, is an amazing engine. I don't necessarily like the sound of a V6 as much as I like a V8, but right. you can't. You got to give it up, like the power output that those things make. And um, you know, the two three EcoBoost I think would be a great option instead of like an SR or something. I don't know why anybody would put that in their <laughs> right. car, Sam. Yeah, uh, Sam, you put that way. in your car. I didn't or, put it there. Forsberg and Turk did. I wanted a two J. Hey. Oh, then what? You didn't want. You obviously didn't want a TJ very much. much right? Well, it's all about show budget and uh, ease of uh, work. And the, those lazy fuckers were like, "We don't want to replumb all that stuff." <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> they spent they spent a week of fifteen hour days. Uh, how, how do you stuff. how do you really feel? Uh, <laughs> I feel very indebted to them for uh, my success in my cool drift car. So, uh, are thanks. you currently working for them? Not for them. No, I mean we work in the same garage right now. So uh, oh, okay. I we work we work separate. Uh, but together, we all hold hands. But we're not. We're not um, like together. Together. 
You guys aren't okay. dating or anything. Uh, I got a question. Or uh, this actually is from uh, Boner Flute Twelve. Oof. He <laughs> that one might actually be real. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know um, by being a part. What's so fun? Like, dude, can't the dude just have an Instagram name without like being no, laughed no, at? It's totally I feel okay. bad for the kid. Come Bo- on, stop Bo- making fun of Boner, Boner Flute Twelve. 12. Um, he wants to know, being a part of a large team, have you ever experienced team orders or have ever heard about team orders happening and drifting? Uh, hashtag Vegas. Um, team orders. I, I mean, like, ex- I, that really needs, like, more explanation. Uh, let me see if I can um, message him real quick. <laughs> yeah. All right, Butterfly. Okay, I just messaged him. He said uh, examples as far as, you know, potentially bowing out of a battle to let the other driver advance to get points or uh, – strategizing Nothing. to get certain drivers wins if they're higher up in the championship or even going back to the Tyler McQuarrie getting kicked out of the Z and put Darren McNamara in there in Vegas that one year. Like has that wasn't it... Darren McNamara. That was myself. Oh, that was you. There Whoa. you go. Fuck. Oops. That was my bad. Sorry. Um, Boner right. 12, um, Boner I mean, 12 I mean, got I mean, the question wrong. But if, has have, have you ever we... experienced or heard of something like that happening as a strategy for drivers to advance? You know, let's go back to that because obviously um, – just to kind of clear things up, that was not my call at all. That was the team's call um, with that. And, you know, at that point I was leading in championship points. They wanted to put me in the best car possible. It was Thursday. My engine blew up and it was their call because um, the only other car we had was a right-hand drive car. And I, and that's what Tyler drove, proficient. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm more proficient in a left-hand drive car. And, you know, it, it, it did work because I was able to qualify and get some points there. Um, you know, I definitely was not used to that 350Z at all. It was a completely different animal than my Mustang. Uh, I guess that would be the closest thing that you would come to team orders. Like anything like bowing out or not like giving it all, your all. I've never experienced anything like that. I've never been a part of anything like that where... Um, a team owner or, you know, anybody from like Falcon has ever said, Hey, you need to like not beat them or they need to not beat you. I mean, that's one thing that I love about Falcon is that they will support all of their drivers to the fullest extent, but they have never been a part of like team orders or anything like that. It's whoever's going to win is going to win. And that's how it is. Like maybe the best man win. Cause if you look at, um, you know, in 2011 or 12, when T- uh, Tyler won that event, right, and he beat myself and he beat Darren McNamara, and we were the only two people that had a chance to win the championship. And that that actually might have been the year that that Di won. So I don't know, maybe there was team like something with that. No, I'm just kidding. Like nah, that, that, but, that was the um, year Di won. But but that's what I mean, like. You know, if there was team orders, I'm sure that, I don't know. Now that I think about it, that's kind of weird. So the answer but is no. no. Yeah. No. <laughs> it happens Absolutely in other not. forms of motorsports, yeah. you know. You oh, just, it, you it is. I mean, it, like, especially, like, uh, F1 where, like, uh, what's Yeah, it, uh, but if you look at, like, that is completely different animal. Yeah. I mean, you well, can strategies. 100%. Do you want me to bring up a point? I'll bring up a straight. What about the Luke Bakula Essa where... Luke pulls up the line and is like, oh, my car's broke now. So it Essa goes, advances. So Essa, he goes back to the pits doing a burnout with yeah. a broken car. So like at that point, that could have been a strategy or something. We don't know. But that could be an example of some sort yeah. of call or order to allow another driver to advance. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really know what happened there. But, you know, it's those are like that's not team orders. That's just like. Uh, maybe if it did go down like that, that was a homeboy having his boys back. Yeah. And well, and if you want to tell me that there's not other groups of people that wouldn't do the exact same thing, yeah, right, yeah. dude. Because I, I think Corey got the order and he decided to qualify 33rd. Right, that's what was my order. So That's why, yeah, you just get... You know, just hand it Ju- up. Sometimes Ju- you got to give it Judas. to my boys. Sometimes you got to <laughs> give it to my boys when I try yeah. to do it. The thing is, I can't win all of them. You know what I mean? Well, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, pretty much. I remember one time Corey and I were at Peter Popper Pizza and they ran out of pizza. And I saw, I took one look at Corey. Mm-hmm. I was like, this guy's got to eat. Yeah, and I, I let him go in, in line in front of me. So I feel like that's a pretty similar that's pretty, situation. That's a close mm-hmm. to team orders. Hey, thanks for doing that. Well, I, don't, I don't let Corey get in line behind me. Nope. <laughs> I'm afraid. 
Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question from Kensington Prime. He's saying, uh, Justin, we've seen you uh, go rock crawling with Forrest Wang. So who's got a better style in rock crawling and who's got a better style on drifting? Oh, Before boy. Before you answer that real quick, uh, I just want to say, say thank you to Boner Flute for that last question. <laughs> really good question, Boner Flute. True. Good so, question. Boner Flute 12. So I don't think there's really a style in rock crawling. It's just like, dude, that is just like pure having fun and getting away from what is work now um but you know i think force and i really enjoy that obviously we we do that quite a bit uh we go all over the west coast to some of the best spots i mean we've been to moab to four dice to rubicon to moon rocks um do i mean uh, johnson valley um cougar buttes there's Ooh. just a, a ton of like sweet places that we go to logandale um sand hollow which is probably like the best place that we've been to um but there's no really like style dude we're just going out having fun enjoying um nature and just having a blast uh doing something that is like carefree you know that's what drifting started out as i'm so down to sell my stupid slam street car and get like a 400 trd pro right now after this this is my second king of hammers but like lowered street cars suck dude like i want a big fucking banger truck yeah. Well, welcome to what we've been doing for the last like five years. <laughs> and also, that, welcome that to being that? thirty and like lowered loud cars aren't as fun <laughs> on the street anymore. Hey, Sam, is King of Hammers that strip club you went to? No, that's uh, that's Hammer King. <laughs> <laughs> that's Hammer Babes. <laughs> Anybody else? Right. Sam, pop I, I got I, I got mine. I it back up. My phone. My phone went off. Uh, it was a really good question from uh, Macho Man Randy Sanchez. Ooh. He's a long time questioner, first time listener. He said, uh, "So where do you see yourself in a hundred years?" <laughs> in, in heaven. This is good to me. Uh, this is a, that's a good question. I love it. Also, do you think drivers should be introduced the same way as pro wrestlers? What song would you walk out to? Oh man, I don't know. Um, I Enigma, you know gotcha. what? Throwing it back to when uh, I, I don't know if it was Tony Angelo that convinced uh, Formula D to have <laughs> some Sounds... songs, but when they set up that, that, that <laughs> a land down under song for Reese Millen, that was amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was my first year at FD was when drivers had songs, and uh, that was the last year, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so oh, that was so good. <laughs> so, to get this straight, that was Tony Angelo's call, yeah, dude. No. Tony Angelo like snuck that song in for Reese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a classic. Uh, good, good job, Tony. Good job. This is a. Right. Did you, you see? Hey Sam, did you see Richard Dinger hot flinger question? I was reading at his <laughs> question. Not, right but is it good? It's pretty good. It's pretty interesting. I go for it. Why'd you, right. why'd you I'll, hit I'll it? fling it off. This is from uh, Richard Dinger hot dog flinger. I'm reading that right now. Yeah. Which host would you punch in the face, kick in the sausages biscuit, or let them drive your car to buy you a pack of smokes? <laughs> right, one more time. <laughs> what, what are the options? It says, uh, you, <laughs> I'll read it. Given the opportunity, because let's be real, we all want you to do it. Which host would you punch in no, the face? We all, we all want to do it. We all want to do it. Which host would you punch in the face, kick in the sausage biscuit, biscuit or let them drive your car to buy you a pack of smokes? Oh, we well, can I'm include scared. Big Ball and leave one house There's out only because two hosts, right? <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah, if you pick the Don't right they ones. Mean to Paco. I mean, just because he's Mexican doesn't mean he doesn't count. Whoa, oh, Justin, oh, you guys, you guys. Well, yeah. the thing was, you've been talking about coyotes the whole time. I thought you were talking about smuggling people across the border. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so obviously I'm the guy you're gonna punch in the face. Punch. Uh, what else we got? <laughs> Kick. And Kick in the sausage car. biscuit and let him. Somebody drives car to pick him up. Smokes. Um, Paco can't some, drive cars. I don't, I don't. I don't smoke. Uh, I probably. I wouldn't want to be kicked in the sausage biscuit, so I probably wouldn't do that to anybody else. And punching somebody in the face. Just, just kick, kick Corey. Just, it's I fine. I don't really want to do any of that. And Sam is very punchable. I mean, just. I've look been at watching him. a bunch of videos on YouTube of monks getting cu- kicked in the nuts. Yeah, Sam, do you so think I can punch the gray off your hair? <laughs> no, that's too far gone. Man. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, that is never going away. Unfortunately, you could apply hey, instead, lovingly some well, it, uh, just just for men. Uh, touch a grade instead of a to beard, touch a grade, to punch a grade. To. Punch a grade. So, I mean, you, you, could, you don't have to punch it. You could just lovingly just cope like, into like that. Some, yeah, wow, that'd be nice. Just don't let it rub off in your hands. All right. Well, I guess it's all. Sam is the answer for all three questions. Hey, punch, kick, and drive. Let's see. Uh, 
Here's another question. 1089 photography. If you couldn't drive a Mustang or an RX-7, no RX-7s either, what chassis and engine combo would you run? No RX-7, no Mustang. Uh, can I run a Coyote still? Uh, sure. That, what, yeah. Is that your current motor right now? Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> Why? You can, uh, you can because do a that's Ford the whole V8. point. It could be a Ford V8, just can't be a Coyote. Which which motor and which chassis though? I would I would use the uh, 572 cubic inch big block that Ford Performance is going to come out with um, because that thing's supposed to make 750 on pump gas. Okay, um, is that a big so, block? Uh, I'm bringing that with uh, probably like 150 shot. Okay, and, and what? Then, chassis. Ford Pinto Pontiac Aztec. So so, so no. No RX-7 chassis, like any... None, none, none. No RX chassis. And no Mustangs either. You know, we're just going to say no Mazda, okay? <laughs> just put, so that, no, put the so, Ford engine in a Camaro. Yeah, the Miatas so no, are out of the no question, Mustangs, too. No like no generation Mustang, no generation right. Mazda. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's a tough one. We know you um, love Miatas, so... Yeah, no Miatas can, either. Can you imagine a big block in a Miata? Yes. Yep. It looked like probably the whole car is like it's a called anchor. Danny George. It didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Danny. <laughs> you know how it is. Um, let's see. Chassis. By the way, the big the big block was Danny himself. Yep. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like that. It. If I was going straight just to like probably have the most dialed chassis in Formula D, I would just probably pick a S15 because. I mean, Simple. that oh. is like a tried and true chassis. Um, S15 but... with a Ford big block would be pretty sweet. Yeah, I was hoping he was going to say sausage biscuit, but I guess yeah. that was the last question. Are you You're just hungry? <laughs> would are, would you ever consider? Uh, I mean, this is it's a Mazda, but like a Cosmo. You probably know those. Uh, I don't think that would really be a good drift chassis. You think? To be honest, um, I think that. A Focus RS has a really good uh, wheelbase, so that might actually be a pretty good option. It would just be, with the rules, how they're written, it would be nearly impossible to make that a good drift car. Watch out, Frederick Asbo. Here comes JTP with a Ford Focus mm -hmm. to take take the, the Grocery Getter Championship off your hands. Well, I mean, if I was going to do that, then I would have to do a 2.3 EcoBoost um, with some serious... Uh, in, like turbo setup. Yeah. That's I'd what that's what they to, have, uh, right? Over at full race and, and get some love with uh, turbo EcoBoost to a, make an R, uh, RS work. That's actually a good answer. I mean, I think the folk the Ford Focus has a chance to become an eventually new uh, drift chassis once they're old and cheaper. Now they come all wheel drive. I don't think it's this called the, the RS still though, right? No, the just the, just the yeah. um, yeah, they're all with drive, but they have the drift mode. Like they're literally made to well, the put car, like ninety five percent of the power in the rear wheel. The car can totally qualify legally per the rule book. Right. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. Apparently, you can just bring whatever you want. But yeah, but yeah, I think. I mean, I don't know. Bring well, with how the rule book is is written now, I mean, anything that uh, comes all wheel drive, you basically can make happen. But again, I understand where they're coming from that uh, with that because. Their form of these trying to get Toyota more involved, and the FRS is, I think, done after this year, or maybe it was done last year. I don't really like stay up on the Toyota stuff, but, but here um, comes the you know, if you have a team that's competent of building a car that is not traditionally going to be a drift car in Papadakis Racing, um, and you can do it to a rule book that isn't crazy, it's not like what they. Uh, allowed back in like the Tanner Faust Cyan TC NASCAR engine days. Um, and, you know, they they get Toyota in. And, and like I said in the beginning of this, you know, getting the uh, manufacturers involved more, I think, is detrimental to the success of our sport. Awesome. Hmm. Good, good answer. Well, I think uh, I have, I have one, one last question from. Get it, get it. Username Big Balls Brian, aka Ooh, A Bit Brian. I don't know how is he posting messages at the same time as control the what? audio. What? AKA the I human got hammer. Hacked. AKA Somebody hacked. I got no, hacked. Montezuma's Revenge. Yeah. 
are you are you uh, so he is asking are you familiar with a Ford Barra engine inline six in Australia and would you consider drifting uh Thunderbird with an inline six from Ford? Thunderbird actually like the old Thunderbird ninety the, uh, yeah ninety one to like, same yeah, as, like, the one, box yeah. body. Yeah, yeah. With, well, no, 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 no. This the generation after that. The ones with the base. the ones with independent suspension. Yeah. Um, but I think it's like that same um, generation, more or less, like '90s Thunderbird. Right? Yeah, it's like yeah, the, yeah. the it's not not the the retro looking one, but the one that looks like a just like a squared '90s. But it's it's not a Fox body anymore. It's got the independent suspension and um, five O engines. What, hold on, let me check something real quick. What uh, is that like a ninety? Yeah, go like look up like a ninety-two Thunderbird, and that would. That I want as you're looking at that, Sam. Would you? What am I looking for? You're looking for a, a Thunder Turd, <laughs> like a ninety-two, right. ninety-three I'm Thunderbird. Googling, I'm that googling one, Thunder Thighs. What is? <laughs> that ninety-two wouldn't Thunder be thighs. that good of a drift car. It wouldn't. It's really, it's really long. It's a hundred and thirteen yeah. inch wheelbase. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an SC three hundred, pretty much. Hey guys, oh, here's a here's a little spoiler for you. Almost every one of your crazy ideas for a drift car would be a terrible drift car. The SC three hundred Paco's one hundred and three inch wheelbase. Oh, so this one's ten inches longer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So well, there's that idea. Sorry, Brian. I mean, eh, it's okay. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be so but, sad. There, there's a picture of the supercharged Thunderbird. That's the generation. Well, I'm that's like a about. little overdone. It is overdone. <laughs> SE. <laughs> yeah, so the, the Ford that's a good looking car. Focus RS is a 104 inch wheelbase. Like that's getting closer to a really good wheelbase. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so the magic number then is to be around 100. Then, I'd say like 101 ish. Then, if you at, if you really look at any of those, um, like 240s, um, S13 through 15, they're all stretched out. So I think like. Uh, S13 is around 97-ish. Uh, S14 is a little bit longer, and S13 is, I think, a 99. But if you look at them, they're all running more casters, so they're pushing the front wheels forward, and they're pulling their rear wheels backwards to get over a 100-inch wheelbase. Um, I think a Supra actually has a really good factory wheelbase, so that should be, like, a really good drift car. Um, we're talking to Forrest about his car. You know, I, he thinks that he could definitely, like, slay in that car, but... You know, I don't, you know, I, his S15 obviously is a sick car too. So, so who's the ace of bass then? <clears throat> Who? It's, what? A, it's, a, it's a band in the Junk. 90s called Ace of Bass, <laughs> and I was making a reference. Are, are you familiar with that uh, that uh, Australian engine, the Barra, the inline six? No, what, Ford? what is it called? The Ford Barra? Oh my yeah. God, stop. No. No, it, no one a, knows that engine is Paco. Yeah, no but, one ever but will. Justin is it's a, a Ford. Pretty, it's a pretty it's, sick inline six turbocharged engine. engine. It's a beefy. Inline six. It'd be like the RB. It's, it's like, like the, the, the American. Like the, it's the, two, a, it's the Australian two J. Yeah. It's in a turbocharged petrol. That's like petrol. I think it was like what are the the Holdens or That's, no 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 uh, the Falcon cars. Yeah, the Ford it. Falcon uh, Falcons have them. Yeah. They they they're pretty much like an Australian two J, but they're Ford. That's like, a four liter. Yeah. Four liter. Inline six. Inline turbo. six turbo. Dual cam. I mean, cast iron block, aluminum head, DOHC with VTEC. Is D much. D I V C T. Yep, that's that's the boy. Four hundred and thirty six horsepower stock. Boom. I'm telling you. That's I, a factory I, engine. I, 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 the only, I've been the only bar I know is obsessing over this Barra engine for a while. <laughs> Paco Ibarra <laughs> engine. <laughs> oh no, I mean that definitely is a super style engine. There you go. For sure. So put that in no. your next hot rod. Wow, that's that's crazy. now look how much it's look like up how much they are to find on eBay. <laughs> Yeah, right. A 270T, that's 362 horse, 406 pound, foot pounds of um, torque stock. Yep. Well, yep. just saying that, Paco's now fully torqued stock. No, oh, I mean, this, Brian this, is the this, one this, who's this, got uh, the hard on on those. I, mean, I just know they're good engines. It's just like impossible to find here in the States. Well, this one's like 436, 425. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that throws yeah. It down. Well, red, obviously, red the best engines have terrible uh, support structures and almost impossible to find replacement parts. So that engine must be the best. Yeah, that definitely like would make RB. sense to run here because you know you could always go down to a Ford dealer and just pick up some spare parts. Easy right. to fix, easy to find some spark plugs, oil filters, <laughs> you name it, it just fits. Oh, um, I didn't do that. Wow, I didn't do that. Wow, he was... Sam, hang on, <laughs> oh. on Justin. Yeah, that that was all him. <laughs> Wait, what? 
It looks like Justin dude. got hung up on or he got disconnected, but it sounded like a hung up. He yeah, said his phone died or his phone was about to die, yeah. so probably just... Uh, okay, so he got a hold so of So you can bring uh, him back. If not, yeah, I mean... I'll try to bring him back. But now that he's not here, uh, God, that guy is wow. a lot nicer than I thought he would be. <laughs> Actually, yeah. He talked about racks. He talked about uh, uh, a lot rats, of for- holes. He's talked about... Um, he didn't really talk too much about drifting or anything that I got understood. Uh, well, trying he to find him again on uh, Skype. It's Justin Tyler Perry. Yes, <laughs> that's Justin that's Tyler, that's Tyler her. Thomas. I thought it was Justin Tyler Thomas. Justin Tyler Thomas. Yeah, exactly he's the dude from Home Improvement, right? I thought it's Thomas the Train. <laughs> I, I literally can't find him on Skype right now. It's very strange, even though I just spoke with him. Do we have to say bye and stuff to him, or can we just hang up on him? Can, can we mean, just like like stop the show? The p- I've, I've said everything over. I want to, Dan, except for you know the no. usual. Who do you think he is? What can yeah. right? All that. Let's see if we can oh no, I'm adding, I'm adding the wrong Justin Pollock. Oh God! Who's, oh my God! Who? This is it. This is that's a, that's that's it, boys. God dang it! We if always do so good near the end. We ruin it every single time. Every single time. We just can't close out an episode. Good. Uh, well, I'm sure that he would say. I would like to think. Oh, come on, Paco. Time. Paco needs to put on your sunglasses. Paco, put on your NASCAR sunglasses, and you have to sign off. Uh, as Justin Pollock, I'm um, thanking idea. your sponsors. Uh, thank everybody that you need to thank as being a part of uh, JTP's team, or since you are JTP, so, why must yeah, things so are the best? Watching, right. Oh, Sam, you won't believe it. JTP's in the studio he, he, he right now. Yeah, he just walked Paco, in. That's why he hung up. Paco stepped away to the yeah. bathroom. JTP's here. Hey, in the JTP. Studio now. So thanks for being on the show with us. Would you like to uh, thank anybody? Not really. Uh, wow. Good JTP. <laughs> I mean, that good job being you, JTP. I just got to say that uh, Vaughn, I'm coming for you, brother. I better watch out for you at Long Beach, brother. Watch out. I'm coming for you. Do you have any people you want to thank on behalf of Maximum Driftcast? I want to thank, I I wanna thank uh, Rush, uh, Roush, uh, Motorsports, and Jack Roush. I want to thank Rush Limbaugh. Uh, Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Come on. Uh, oh. Bro, uh, no, not you. Oh, Paco's uh, back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. God you forgot it. to thank Link ECU and Portland Speed Industries, so give those guys a... Uh. Got to thank uh, Link ECU, Portland Speed Industries, PSI for short. <laughs> I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, Bon. What about AEM Intakes? Do you want to thank them? AEM Intakes. Oh. What about uh, Patreons? Do you want to thank them? Go ahead. Keep thanking them, Paco. Paco, keep thanking them. So, <laughs> we got to say thanks to AEM Intakes. Thanks for... Uh, making the best. I feel like I'm sucker Alex. Valve. I feel Just like I'm Alex keep Jones. Keep going, JTP. No, you're JTP. Keep Thanks going. for the best sucker valve. The, 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 <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Come on, JTP, finish Come it. On. Thanks to thanks to McLeod Clutches. Thanks to everybody who's watching the show. Thanks to Justin Pollock who was on the show. Patreon. Thanks to our Patreon. McLeod. Yeah. It's it's all it's all reptilians. And tell they're, who they're poisoning after. the water. <laughs> who are you going to beat Very this year? Good. You got to go after Vaughn. I'm going to go. I'm going coming for you, Vaughn. I'm coming for you, Vaughn. I'm coming for you, brother. Sick. The end. <laughs>